Uh, maybe start of four there, so he's on uh, Raw and Dance, so there's a bit of a surprise. And uh, the Bernie Huddle have uh, they've actually started all deep forward, and they're about to bounce the ball. Barry Trivet. Yes, the uh, 19, uh, 2013 grand final for State League is underway, and South Launceston with a hurry kick out the centre of the ground goes in the uh, Blackberry direction. It's punched away from him at ground level, just outside 50 metres. South Launceston going to the town end in the opening quarter. There's a bounce up, and the umpire will bounce at about 60 metres uh, from goal. So only one kick so far. Laycock in there. It's a bit of a tap down. Another hurried kick by the uh, South Launceston player in Bow Thorpe. And it goes in the Mitchell Thorpe direction. He runs onto it and marks 40 metres from goal. The um, playing in front. Yeah, he had two or three metres on Andy Lee. He just read it read it uh, quicker off his brother's boot. And it was a terrific clearance from Bow Thorpe. It was just a hurried uh, snap onto the boot, uh, Matthew, wasn't it? And it just sort of floated and wobbled. But playing in front, Mitch Thorpe. An absolute uh, legend this year with the South Launceston Footy Club. He's won absolutely everything possible, every medal that's going, I think. And he's about to line up for the Bulldogs. First opportunity at the town end. He'll kick from 45 metres. Goal umpire works a long way to the right. It's a minor score. He may be off target today. He's not happy with himself for missing that one, but it's the Bulldogs' first score. They're one point. Bernie are yet to score, and we played just on one minute into the opening quarter. Now, Walters will kick in from fullback. Kicks it to himself, then kicks in the Laycock direction. He'll be the target all day. Over the back of the pack is uh, Cade Monday. Gets it out a little bit wider there to Hislop, who was good last week. Puts it onto the right boot and goes down forward looking for Robinson, who's a long way from goal. He's almost on centre wing, far side of the ground. Monday's got the ball again. John Cock is in there for the Bulldogs. Ball goes to ground. It goes across the boundary line on the railway side of the ground. And the boundary umpire over there will have his first opportunity to throw the ball back in. And just a couple of other matchups. Looks like Tom Rain has got the job on Bulldog again, and Shawnee James has got the job on uh, Russell Robinson. Boundary thrown far side. Hills up against Morrison. Hills gets it down. Shark though by Burney. Play attack with immediately and gets a push in the back. So a free kick to Dylan Smith over there on the uh, railway wing. Centre wing. Burney kicking to the northern end of the ground. Weighs up his option to Smith and kicks inside 50. Up here looking for Bulldog. Doesn't make him though. Mantle spoils on the ground. Mantle get really gathers the ball. Gets tackled straight away by McKenna. Could have been holding the ball. Yes, it was. Great tackle there by McKenna. And he deals with Mantle after the free kick has been given. Not reversed though. And Nick McKenna will take a free kick. And he'll be about uh, 48 metres from goal. Just inside the paint of 50 when he shoots for goal. Strong tackle there by uh, Bernie. Utility both those, player, Nick both those players, uh, McKenna and uh, Rory Mansell, have actually got both got terrific endurance for big athletes. They've actually got terrific endurance, so they'll run each other uh, all day, I'd imagine. Healthy crowd of patrons over there on the railway wing, in front of the scoreboard as McKenna moves in, 38 metres out, shoots for goal, it's off to the right. In fact, it's out of bounds on the full to the right-hand side behind post. Matthew? Yeah, Darren Bannon we spoke about, it looks like he's gone to Jay Blackbury off half-back, so another terrific matchup. Clinton Drake to take the free kick in the back pocket. Decides to uh, go to his right. Finds John Cocker who has a bit of space. Darts around. Can't get round Smith. Does so now. Runs his full measure. Kicks with the left. Outside 50. Over there looking for Hills and McKenna. Knocked away there by Hills. On the ground now. And uh, spills out of bounds in front of the scoreboard. Which reads South Launceston one behind. Bernie yet to score. Three and a half minutes into quarter number one. Here in the Tasmanian Statewide League Grand Final. Good crowd in. Good atmosphere. And a tight start to the game in this first few minutes. Boundary throw in. Nick McKenna up against Mitch Hills. Hills gets the better of it in this occasion. Knocks the ball down to his Rovers. Taking the ball away there is Hanson. Gets a handball to Mansell. It's the right foot. Awkward kick. Along the line looking for distance. Finds Thorpe on the wing. Picks it up in the bounce. Handball's in board. Can't find a teammate. Contested possession now. Taking away is Blackberry on that trusty left foot. Finds Kelly Mansell now. He's at about uh, two and a half kicks out from goal. Short passes looking for a teammate who didn't attack the ball. That was Russell. And uh, chipping in is Harry Walters. Kicks across the line and finds Shackleton. The, uh, the, we spoke about Alex Russell. Uh, they put a lot more respect in him today because they've sent Harry Walters to him. So uh, Alex Russell's going to have to be on his game. Harry Walters, terrific back pocket, halfback player. Harry Walters, short pass. Uh, there finds Monday on the far side of the ground. He goes in short once again and finds Rudy Barrett on centre wing. It's a chain of short passes. Bernie building slowly here. A lot of players flooding into uh, the Bernie forward line. Rudy Barrett kicks a low, poor kick towards the boundary line. He's over there looking for Caleb Hislop. Out of bounds. Centre wing in for May Parkside. No fireworks yet, Barry. We thought uh, there might have been a little bit of biff, but they're all playing the ball, which is yeah. fantastic. Very smart opening by both teams. Harris, Clark and Lena are the three field umpires in charge today. As the ball's thrown in from the far side, there's a big pack forming. 
and uh, they might have to bounce it up here because there's about 10 of those that found a free kick. There was a Bernie player that the umpire said has been pushed in the back and it's Shackleton gets him, getting himself up off the bottom of the pack on centre wing railway side of the ground. Looks to uh, bring the ball inside. There's not a great deal happening for him, so he, he's unable to go that way, so he just uh, chips out a little bit wider and finds, I think it's Monday on the far side there for the Bernie Dockers. Now, there's a lot of players in a wall there right on the 50-metre semicircle. Looks for Bulldog. Too long for that player. Over the back is Tom Ramus, and he marks nicely across half-back for the Bulldogs. That'll right in front of the scoreboard. That'll give me a lot of confidence, one at the first contest. Uh, Tommy Ramus, excellent one-on-one uh, -on -one mark against Bulldog. Well, it's a lovely 60, 70-metre kick out of defence. It's too long for the pack, in fact, and uh, Mitchell Thorpe that goes over the back and allows the runners of um, Bernie in through uh, Clay Hardy. Gets it out a little bit wider. Here they go down that railway side now looking for his slot. Handball's in board. Here go the Bernie Dockers. Now they're going to kick the ball inside 50. Going in front is Gray. Can't quite take the mark. At ground level, the big ruckman uh, Laycock is there. Handball's under pressure. Goes to a South Launceston player. Putting himself back in there is Dylan Smith. Out there in the uh, Templeton direction. Templeton might have been pushed in the back. No, the umpire's called play on. Corey Mansell's there. Ball at ground level. Raymouth shovels it out, goes back out there now to the uh, player in Drake in the last line of defence for the Bulldogs, he pushes it to the boundary, it ricochets off the Bernie player and across the boundary for throwing and uh, Daniel Johncock rotating off the ground here, you'll probably see him do that, he's obviously coming back from that collarbone injury, started as the sub uh, the last final and uh, you know he's rotating off and Cody Thorpe on now the ball's thrown in right in the forward pocket for the Bernie Dockers, going to the Invermay Park end in the opening quarter there's a big pack starting to form again. I think the umpire this time will be forced to throw at Sky. Well, he will indeed, about 20 metres out from the goal line where Bernie are going. Security doing their work just in front of us, evacuating a few uh, patrons that had snuck into the where you're not allowed to sit area, obviously. <laughs> There's the ball being uh, tossed by the umpire. McKenna tried to get boot the ball, but he couldn't. But Rory Mansell boots it out of defence for the uh, Bulldogs. Comes out here toward the Hislop direction. Clever skills, eludes two players. Gets it onto his teammate in Rice. Ball back at ground level though, and uh, South Launceston and through Jody Harper take it out of the fence and run it out to Rulla Kelly Mansell, who marks here on the half back line for the doggies. There's his kick now, looking for uh, Mitchell Corp and Corp on centre wing. Long way from centre half forward, takes a nice mark. Kicks it to a teammate under a lot of pressure, but uh, Alex Russell's too good on this occasion for his Bernie defenders. Here's a bell opportunity now for South through Matt Hansen, who marks just on 50. Can he kick the distance? He's going to have a long shot. He indicates, I'm going for goal. Fancies himself. He's got the breeze at his back. He's a goal kicker, Matt Hanson, although he's an inside mid. He, even in the Mariners this year, he actually kicked a few goals. Well, he never hesitated. When he took that mark, he's going to kick it from 53 metres. He kicks it long. It's going a little to the left. It's offline and through for a minor score. The distance wasn't a problem whatsoever. Beautiful kick off the boot, but just a little offline. The Bulldogs, South Launceston, two points. Bernie are yet to score, and we've played just on eight minutes of this opening quarter. A short kick out there from Harry Walters. Finds Cade Monday about uh, 15 metres out from his defensive goal in the back pocket. Sizable South Launceston cheer squad there behind that uh, City end goal as well. Made up of Colts players and lots of other supporters over there. Long kick by Monday. Outside 50. Picked up now, given to John Cock. John Cock now kicks inside 50, looking for Thorpe, but it's well chopped out there by the Bernie defence. Contested ball now on the ground. In there is Matt Hanson once again. The Barton Hagen it is, I think. And it's going to be a free kick pushing the back. It is Thane Barton Hagen, and he'll be shooting for goal. Not that much uh, different to Matt Hanson's last shot. Probably about five metres closer to goal. Just uh, directly in front. He kicked from just inside the paint of 50. And he put his body in first for the ball there. Pushed it back by Dylan Smith. And... Uh, Daniel John Cook there didn't hesitate. Macca looking for Mitch Thorpe when he uh, got a bit of space. Yeah, there. look, they're on. Their skills have been fantastic so far, South Launceston. In comes Barden Hagen, shooting for goal. Kicks from about 48 out. Fades away to the right. That's another behind there to South Launceston. They go to three behinds, three points. And Bernie are yet to score. As, uh, three, three, set, three set shots, isn't it, Dave? You know, yep. they've missed yep. them already. Nice to get one through here shortly. Harry Walters to Monday. Out further now. And uh, taking the mark there is Braden Hayes. He looks there and finds Bannum on the paint of 50 in defence. So uh, four short kicks and Bernie have worked it out to their defence of 50. And they're working the ball to, uh, forward in a slow and de decisive manner at the moment. He kicks wide over there looking for Monday. But it's knocked away and it's out of bounds. A lot of plays so far over on that far side. Which tests out the other side a bit. So the binoculars are coming in very handy. Interesting, Bernie went wide there. You know, they're, they're probably trying to get the ball out of the centre corridor because that's where South can attack and then go straight into the forward line. Yes, every attacking move so far has been over that railway wing. Free kick out of the ruck. It's against Nick McKenna going to Cody Thorpe. Handball straight away to Dan Johncock. He dummies around McKenna easily. 
Then has a kick inside 50. Looking up there for the big tall timber down McCulloch, but he can't take the mark. Knocked to ground. Rudy Barrett has it. Looks to his right, looks to his left. Then decides to go along the line looking for space. Teammate there tried to run onto the ball. Was knocked off it. That's Hardy. Ball is now with Blackberry. Left foot hook kick out uh, 10 metres up from goal. Good defensive play there from Lee. Probably could have got a free kick. In fact, he does get a free kick. He's infringed upon there by Zane Brown. So free kick to Andrew Lee right beside the behind post. It's South Boston 3, Bernie yet to score. And we're at the 10-minute mark. So it's a tight start to this game. Free kick there by Lee. Mark taken by Cade Monday. He's had a lot of the ball so far in this first quarter. The Bernie veteran. Kicks over now towards the wing. They're looking for McKenna, but over the back, great mark there taken by Cody Thorpe. That's a good matchup at the moment. Strong mark by Thorpe. Cody Thorpe runs off now. Kicks quickly inside 50. Up there looking for his brother Mitchell, who takes the mark. Out in front of Andy Lee. Just it's a one-way up for goal. He plays on. Comes inside 50. Shoots for goal. Looking for South Fox oh. first, but it just fades to the left at the last moment. And it's a one behind. Sorry, before Thorpe played on there, I was going to say that's his third mark. He's had two metres on Andy Lee at every stage. So, you know, it depends what uh, Brett Plant wants to do if he wants Mitch Thorpe to take 20 plus marks again today. Well, his slop uh, runs out of the pants, kicks in the grey direction. It's taken away from him, though, by the uh, Bulldog player. Goes to the ground there with Jade Child. Battling hard for it also in there is Will Hansen at the pack forming right in front of us in the broadcasting position. And there'll be a bounce down just inside the boundary line. Uh, Jade Child, we saw Jade Child a few weeks ago tag Kate Collar Jasney out of the game. Today he's, uh, he's on Eli Templeton, another young up and coming player. Well, he got it from that bounce down. He kicked it with the left boot in the John Cock direction. It bounces awkwardly for him. So he thumps it to the boundary. There'll be a throw in. Matthew McGee, uh, Bernie just look a little stagnant when they're going towards the They do, I was going to say, they're actually playing, playing slow play a lot, aren't they? So they're just trying to control the footy, but they're turning it over at the minute. On the throw in, um, Laycock gets the tap down and goes beautifully there to Nick Walters, puts it onto his right boot and kicks towards and finds Brad Harvey here right in uh, centre wing just in front of the broadcasting position. Sees the running Eli Temple and kicks it over and puts it in front of him, but it bounces awkward. That allows uh, Mansell in there, who can't quite take possession of the ball, ends up with Morrison of the Bernie Dockers. He gets it to a teammate who's uh, pushed into the ground with the ball and about three other South Launceston players, and the field umpire will have no choice but to throw it up right in the centre of the ground. So, South Launceston going to the town end in the opening quarter with the aid of a slight breeze, but the bounce uh, from that bounce down goes in the Mansell direction, who takes it on half back for South, but there's about four or five of the forwards for Bernie that swoop on him like a bunch of seagulls and they push him straight to the ground and uh, there's another throw up on 50. It's uh, tapped down here now and running onto it was uh, the uh, Bernie player there in Clint Riley. Could have been awarded the free kick but Joby Harper takes the ball for South Lonsdale and kicks it towards centre wing on the broadcasting side of the ground in front of the big crowd. Here plenty of noise and the umpire finds a free kick. And it'll go to Brown, I think, of uh, the Bulldogs. That was terrific from Zane Brown there. He put his head over it and, uh, and Julie received the free kick. Well, there's his kick. Call him a little uh, Bulldog Terrier. I think they call him Black Caviar might be his nickname as he kicks it. He goes towards the half-forward line. It comes off the pack and across the boundary there'll be another throw in. Hasn't taken long. Nick McKenna's yep. gone on to uh, Mitch Thorpe. So Andy Lee at the moment swung forward. So maybe they're going to do that all day and just mix it up for South Launceston to think about. Well, Hills gets a tap down. It goes straight to Matt Hanson. Hanson's tackle, though, with the ball. Is he going to be deemed... Prior possession? No, he's uh, not. The umpire said we'll throw it up, fellas. I just don't quite know what the field umpires are going to call these days as the ball goes up. Laycock is straight in the John Cock direction. Pumples a little, runs onto it now, kicks from 30 metres out on his left boot, skews it back around, but not enough. Another minor to the Bulldogs. They've kicked five behind in the opening 13 and a half minutes. Bernie are yet to score, and you just wonder what happens in footy. It goes down the other end of the ground, and the opposition kick a goal, and here they go. Bulldogs got it now on half back, chips it in board, and away go the uh, bo the uh, Dockers now through Darren Bannum. Takes a bounce, runs out of half back, draws a player that kicks a shocker, goes out wide looking for Harry Walters, I think it is, thumps it along the ground, back in the Bannum direction. Bannum set upon by a couple of Bulldog players. John Cock takes the ball, then he's tackled by Templeton. It uh, comes out of the back, and the South Launceston in child takes the ball. Kicks it over the top, looking for the running player going to the boundary line there in uh, Roland Coombe. But it beats that fella across the line. There'll be a throw in on the far side. They'll be disappointed with that one, Bernie. Bannum, and that was off. And he, he, he chipped it short and wasn't needed to do it. He could have just cut back through the centre corridor and away they went. But another turnover to Bernie coming out of half back. The Shields gets a tap down from the throw in. But it's uh, straight to three players who can test the ball. It's not coming out of there, so the uh, pie will ball, the, ball it up on the railway wing. Up it goes. 
And pushing the back there against Tyro Morrison. It's going towards Mitch Hills. We'll take the free kick there over on the wing. Matthew. Just interesting, you know, Laycock at the moment is basically playing as a full back on uh, Bart McCulloch as a loose man. And Bernie are happy for him to sit back there. It'll be interesting to see when they do swing him forward. John Cock finds Zane Brown. Two kicks out from goal. Long kick inside 50. Looking for Thorpe who rises, but he's double teamed there by McKenna and Laycock. It's off hands right beside the left behind post. South Oxen deep into attack there. Leading at the moment. Five behinds, five points to yet to score. Even though they've had most of the play, at least Bernie can say they're still in this game. It's virtually nil all halfway through this first quarter. Boundary throw in. Dangerous spot here for Bernie. A lot of players around the ball. Up it goes now. McCulley gets it down. Good tap out. Almost found a teammate there in Hanson, but it spills to the back. Quick kick out of defence by Bernie. John Cox in the van there. Tries to take the markets over his head, though. Lee fumbles. Back to John Cox. He fumbles. And there's three or four players fighting for the ball on the far side. Pushing the back it is. It's going to South Launceston. And it's going against Harry Walters. Waits for the player to fix himself up. It's Rory Mansell. Mansell over there. Mansell kicks inside. Uh, kicks to the Sennar 4 position. F- trying to find Zane Brown. He's pushing the back. So Bernie giving away some free kicks. That one's against Pete Riley that time. He's about two kicks out from goal is Zane Brown. Tell you what, Dave. Brown's had a sensational start to um, this game. He certainly has. Kicks inside 50 looking for Thorpe. Nick Walters is there to chop off that lead and punches it away. It's out of bounds. Matthew. Yeah, they've been lively, haven't they? Brown and John Cock getting their hands on the footy. This, you know... Th- Game's gone past. South Island have five goals on the board or four goals one today. It's five points. That's right. How's that going to affect them later in the game? Boundary throw in. About 30 metres around from the left behind post here. South Island into attack. It's Laycock up against Cody Thorpe. Cody Thorpe gets a tap out but goes straight to McKenna. Scrubby kick along the ground. Bounces, bounces, bounces out of bounds on the half forward flank. Um, South Launceston. Stu Reid doing his best work down the boundary. He's very excited after the Hawks win last night. He's telling us the heavy rotations early from both teams, showing that they're in for the long haul because they're getting their players on and off the ground. Thanks for that. Stewie Reid, the best in the business down there. Katie Thorpe and Andy Lee up in the ruck. Lee gets it down, tries to find Harvey. He's tackled straight away and he's tackled over the shoulder by his South Launceston opponent there in Ryland Coombe. So Harvey takes the free kick, handball straight away to Bannum. Further on the wing, very wide over there towards Robinson. And it's off hands about one centimetre inside the line. And it's out of bounds on the railway wing. There's been a lot of play so far. Bernie, it, it, it looks as though it's a game plan at the moment that they're just going to go wide. They don't want to get it back in that centre corner, as we said before. They just keep doing it. Whether that, you know, limits their forward opportunities. Thorpe uh, gets a beautiful tell. tap He's down John there Cock. to John Cock. He's had a lot of it so far. He's got some space. Kicks inside 50 now. Thorpe once again is double teamed by McKenna and Laycock. Laycock across the front gets a thump away. Thorpe on the ground, though, has a recovery. Taps to himself. Picks it up. Looks for a handball, but it's smothered by Laycock. He goes after again, does Mitch Thorpe. McKenna's there. Three or four players now fighting for the ball. Picked up by Bardenhagen, who's tackled immediately. Now, Pye says no prior opportunity, so it'll be a ball up about 30 metres out from South Watson's goal. Matthew. You know, as we talk about John Cock, I remember at uh, Windsor, uh, West Park, sorry, earlier in, the, earlier in the year, I reckon he had 40 plus. Ball comes to ground. Clay Hardy take it, tackled as he kicks. Can't get an effective kick away. Laycock has it now. Handball's out in front there. Of a teammate there in Rice. He can't pick it up. Picked up by Will Hansen. He has a shot for goal. And that's the first one for South Boston in the 2013 Grand Final. Will Hansen on the run from about 35 metres out. Kicks it straight into the South Boston cheer squad. And that's the first goal on the board to the Bulldogs. 1-5-11. Bernie yet to score. We've been playing 18 minutes. Not, uh, not that we can bet on the TSL first goal kicker, but I tell you what, you would have got good odds on the centre half back being the first goal kicker and Will Hanson. South Launceston are pressing up, pressing up on Bernie and putting a lot of pressure on them coming out of the uh, out of half back. Uh, excellent goal now that's uh, one goal five to South Launceston. So they've got that first goal on the board just there before. Mitch Thorpe, a terrific competitor. He was two on one and he battled and battled and battled and battled and uh, finally got the ball up and from that ball up they got the goal. So terrific competitor. Well, from the bounce down, um, Blaycock gets the better of the tap, but it goes to nobody in particular, so he's uh, forced to do his own roving work. But now the ball goes to uh, ground level where Matt Hansen takes it for the Bulldogs, goes to ground with the ball and two or three Bernie Docker players, and the umpire will have a secondary bounce. Bernie just having a lot of trouble penetrating at the moment, uh, getting towards uh, the centre and the half-forward line. In there is Eli Templeton, takes the ball, but he can't break clear of possession. Goes out a little bit wider there now to Clay Hardy. Gets it out further to Shackleton who chips it in towards Robinson. And Robinson marks 55 metres from goal right in front of the scoreboard. Going to the Invermay Park end. Now any breeze there is will be right in his face if he wants to have a shot from there. I don't think he does. He's looking to find another option. There's not a great deal on though so he's forced to kick it as far as he can. Which is only about 45 metres. But dropping out in front of the pack to Bernie Mark. It's Brady Gray. It's Gray I think as he yep. picks himself up. It is. Thank you Matthew. Yes, uh, Brady Gray has been a real good player during the final series for them. 
He was the only player that put himself in front of the pack, anticipated that the wind might pull it down. It did, and he was there. An opportunity for the Bernie Dockers to kick their first goal 30 metres out directly in front. Yeah, look, I watched him as the ball come in. I was going to call over the top of you. Here comes Brady Gray, because I saw him coming. There was no one in front of the little space, and he went straight into it. Well, this could be the answering goal within about a minute. There's the Brady Gray kick. The goal umpire works to the right, but he steps back between the two big sticks and tells us it's the first goal for the Bernie Dockers. They're one goal straight. South Launceston are 1-5-11. We just ticked into red time, 20 and a quarter minutes opening turn. Yeah, Brady Gray, one of those under-18 players that uh, uh, in a couple of weeks' time will be off to the, uh, the draft camp. He's, uh, he's, a, he's an elite uh, midfielder in terms of his uh, clearance work and explosive speed. But one thing he can do, he can go forward and kick goals. I, I think earlier in the year down at North Hobart, I think he might have kicked seven. Bag of seven earlier in the year, and he kicked a lot of goals for the Mariners as well. South Launceston by five points in the 20 and a half minute mark of this first quarter in the Tasmanian State Wide League Grand Final. You're listening to it on City Park Radio from the bounce. It's uh, a pack of forms just to the other side of the circle, so it'll be a secondary ball up. Up goes Laycock up against Cody Thorpe. Cody Thorpe gets it down. Shackleton sharks it though. He breaks through a few tackles. Kicks inside 50 once again, looking for Brady Gray. It's over his head. Diving for the ball there is Bulldog. Gets a handball away towards Braden Hazel. Weaves between two or three opponents. Gets a short kick on the left there, looking for Lee. It's over his head. Lee's tackled as he picks up the ball. It's close to the boundary line. Still in play. Bulldog takes the ball. He's tackled immediately. Uh, Rory Mance on the ground there. Trying to get the ball out for South. He might be pinged here in a minute. No, he's not. Umpire deems that he had no prior opportunity. Matthew? I reckon Brent Plant at quarter time, if the scores stay similar to this, he would take this definitely. You know, they got off the hook a couple of times when South missed it, but he'd definitely take this scoreboard at the moment. Dylan Riley takes out a defence handball to Drake. He's kicked smothered though. It's still in dispute here as Barton Hagen picks it up. Out to Riley. His handball was not a good one, but it's picked up beautifully by Jay Blackbury. He's going to be tackled from behind by Quint Riley. Just gets it away in time. Gets a handball over there to Weymouth. His handball's not good looking for John Cock. Bernie now with a chance. Brady Gray has it. He's tackled immediately there by uh, Matt Hansen. And it's going to be in a ball up, I think. Yes, it is. About 35 metres out from the Bernie goal. Just very quickly, Bart McCulloch's having a lot of work done on his left thigh there. We know that he's had some injury uh, concerns when he was up in Brisbane. So hopefully it's not too uh, too bad at the moment for South Launceston's chances. The ball's on the defence 50. South Launceston play with the ball and he's pinned. Oh. oh, that's a bit of a rough one. I've seen a couple of those today where it hasn't been played. And that's Jay Blackbury. Yep, yeah, well, Jay Blackbury. The one before should have been paid, I think. Like Blackbury yep. actually went to ground in the tackle and then handballed it. The tackle was completed. He got away with that one, but that one there he didn't. That field umpire was on the other side of the pack. The one on this side, having a good view, did not call that. The fella called it from behind, anticipated. Not on. Yeah. Get in front where you can see it, umpire. Nick Walters with the ball. He's about 45 metres out from goal. Blackbury on the mark. Kicks for goal now. Not a bad kick, but it's fading away to the right. One behind. So that's the first behind for the day for the Bernie Dockers. 117, South Boston 1511. 22 and three quarter minutes into the first quarter. Short kick out there from Mansell. He finds a teammate there in the back pocket. And it gets Daniel Trevina. That's him. Daniel Trevina. Hasn't got many options, so goes in short. Looking there for teammate in James. His handball is smothered, but uh, following up well as Barden Hagen. Kicks on the wing. Has Mitch Hills. He lopes after the ball. And it's just going to beat him over the boundary line. Throw in, railway wing. Four point lead at the moment to South Boston. 23 minutes into the opening term, almost the first quarter completed. Low scoring grand final. 11 plays 7. Plenty of opportunities for South have gone astray in this opening term. Bernie be very happy to be in touch if they happen to jag one in the last minute or two. They could be in front at quarter time as Laycock takes it from the uh, throw in on the far side, kicks it in the uh, Robertson direction. He can't quite take possession of the ball, but it's taken by Matt Hansen. Here go the Bulldogs uh, out of defence on the far side. Going out there now looking for Rulla Mansi, Kendall, Kelly Mansell. He uh, takes the ball there now, gets it on to uh, Mitch Thorpe. No, it's uh, Hills, rather. He uh, gets it to ground level, taken away here beautifully by Sam Rice. Sam Rice is on the bottom of the pack down. He's been pushed to the ground with uh, two or three Bulldog uh, players, and there'll be a bounce up on the far side, centre wing. Just a little bit fumbly in there, South Island. A couple of opportunities, maybe the nerves. Well, Laycock gets a tap again, but it goes uh, straight to Blackbury, who gets it off to uh, the running John Cock. He puts it deep with the left boot in the Mitch Thorpe direction. He marks just out 550. Plays on quickly, chips it over the top to the running Joby Harper, who marks deep in the forward pocket. It's a big kick, this one, because we're in the last minute of the first quarter. The timekeepers have just informed me. OK, well, Joby Harper is outside the boundary line as he shapes to have a deliberate shot at goal. He will kick from about 30 metres, favouring the right boot. And uh, the breeze, when it gets towards the goalposts, uh, will push it back towards the goals. There's his kick. 
This goes straight across the front. No, it doesn't. It slides in. The goal up. I'll work right under the goalpost. And it's a uh, goal to Joby Harper. South Launceston, two goals, 5-17. In the dying seconds of the opening quarter, Bernie 1-1-7. Excellent goal from Joby. Once again, another terrific runner there in Joby Harper. He, he pushed from the half-back line and kept pushing. And, uh, and you know, a terrific little uh, snap over the over the top from uh, Mitch Thorpe. Found him and a, uh, an excellent goal in South Launceston, 2-5-17. And Bernie 1-1-7. Seconds remaining here in this first quarter. Don't forget at quarter time, Zane Littlejohn will be joining us for some analysis of uh, first quarter action. So, not, not long to go. Only about uh, 30 seconds, I'd say, in this, uh, the first quarter as Cody Thorpe gets it down. But there's plenty of players there to shark it for. Bernie comes out now uh, via um, a player that is wearing number eight. I think it might be the Guernsey change there. Nothing. We'll have to have a look at that one. That's Clint Riley. It's Clint Riley. He's got the, the eight Guernsey on today instead of the three. So Remember, he, uh, he ripped the three a couple of weeks That's ago. That's right. He ripped the three a couple of weeks ago. Just went under the eight. Me there for That's a right. So it's quarter time here at Aurora Stadium. And that quarter went 25 and a half minutes. And at quarter time, it's South Monsterton, two goals, 5-17. Leading Bernie, one goal, 1-7. One Barry, the goal kickers. Yes, uh, won't take long to tidy them up. All single goal kickers. He, uh, he wants uh, particular attention given to Monday, as we said, he's had a lot. And he wants, he wants Bernie to fatigue. He wants to make them hurt in the run. He wants to run them off their legs. And at half time, he wants them to be hurting. Very interesting setup here in the uh, opening of the second term. Bernie have six players all within about a 20-metre uh, radius down there, right in the forward uh, zone. And the South Line system with four across half forward, one right down in the goal square by themselves. So totally different setup. But uh, Hills gets to tap down and straight to Laycock, who kicks it inside 50. And running onto it there is uh, Robinson, who marks. So they just spread those six players down there. They all went in different directions. And Robinson was the lucky recipient of that hurried kick by Laycock out of the centre of the ground. He marks it just on uh, 48 metres out, favouring his right boot. Fancies himself. He just goes straight back, tosses the ball up two or three times. Coming into line-up, this will be a terrific start in the second term by the Bernie Dockers, should he be able to kick it. I think he's got the distance, and he's leaning himself to the right, and the ball goes a little bit that way and through for a minor score. So an opportunity there for the Bernie Dockers to uh, peg that lead back in the opening uh, seconds of the second term goes astray. They move to one goal, 2-8, south of 2-5, 17. I reckon that's the matchup, Russell Robinson on Sean James. I reckon if they can isolate Robinson on Sean James, he's, he, he's a dour defender, but uh, maybe not the smartest, and Russell Robinson's very clever. So if they can isolate uh, Russell Robinson on uh, Shawnee James, uh, Robinson can have a few shots of goal, I reckon. Well, Shawnee James took that uh, kick in and kicked it out to Will Hanson, who kicks it deep to the railway wing on the far side of the ground. Big pack of players there, but Shackleton takes it for the Bernie Hawks, chips it over the shoulder and kicks it straight down Clinton Drake's neck. He just kicks it out wide, and the Bulldogs now through. Brown will have the opportunity to run. No, in fact, it's uh, Trevina up on centre wing. He'll have the opportunity to run uh, down the railway side of the ground. Ball comes over the back there, and a quick uh, handball out by Thorpe. Gets it onto a teammate who chips in towards the other uh, player there in Mitchell Thorpe, and he marks uh, just inside 50 over in front of the scoreboard. Now, a good kick of the ball is Mitchell Thorpe, and this is where the breeze would be directly in line with him and the goal posts, I would suggest. He knows he can normally kick the distance. We'll get a good indicator here of just how strong it is. No, he goes for a short pass, almost kicks it to the man on the mark, ends up with Dylan Smith, and the Bernie Dockers are out of, out of their defensive zone, out wide looking for and finding Andrew Lee on the far side of centre wing. Kicks towards the Bulldog direction. In there also is Robinson. He just taps it on the Bulldog. Bulldog takes it, eludes a player, steps to 50, chips from 50 and kicks it sideways and through for a minor score. Another opportunity for the Bernie Docks goes a missing. Grand finals can do funny things, can't they? Mitchell Thorpe, it was a pretty ordinary decision there from him. Yes, and uh, South Launceston now with the ball out of defence. They're on the uh, broadcasting uh, side of the ground here. Mitchell Hill marks on uh, centre wing. Kicks in towards uh, the Cody Thorpe, but on the uh, Mitchell Thorpe direction again. Off the back of the pack, he socks it off the ground. Goes towards the top of the goal square. Bernie defence under the pump. McKenna takes the ball. Handballs out blindly. Gets it onto his teammate there in Riley. He gets it over the top. In goes the South Launceston fellow, but it ends up with Shackleton. Shackleton then just skews it over his left shoulder and kicks it out of the danger zone. It's outside 50. Taken here by Dylan Smith. He kicks towards the centre wing on the broadcasting side of the ground. Running it onto it there is the South Launceston player in Mitchell Hills who tries to elude a player and in doing so stumbles across the boundary line right in front of Interchange. Uh, Bernie have started Andy Lee forward again with McKenna back and, uh, and Bulldog looks as though he's got Will Hanson at the moment. 
Three minutes into the second term, and the balls are thrown in, and Laycock there gets the tap down, but nobody in particular. Here uh, comes the uh, South Launceston uh, defenders now onto it, and the ha quick handball now goes out with Joby Harper. He kicks it here uh, towards the McCulloch direction. He takes what is probably his first mark for the day and gets it on to Roland Coombe, who kicks it deep into the forward pocket there looking for Mitch Thorpe. Mitch Thorpe runs onto it, cleverly skips it towards the goal line, but it goes sideways and through for a minor score. The Bulldogs will be two goals, 6-18. Bernie a 1-3-9, and we've played three and a half minutes of this second term. Short kick out from Harry Walters. Finds a teammate there in Clay Hardy. He uh, kicks it further afield, but it kick gets smothered straight away. And now there's a bit of a box on between Clay, Clay Hardy and his opponent there. That was, a, uh, that was uh, a weird decision. Well, that was young Trevina uh, getting attack. into Clay yeah. Hardy's uh, yeah. pace there. He's running back to defence now as Trevina as the ball is thrown in. Laycock jumps high but can't get it down. Clay Hardy, quick hand pass. Can't find a teammate. Although that teammate wasn't uh, deemed to have the ball when he was held. That was Rice. Play on, says the umpire. Vantage from the free kick. Mark right in the centre circle now by Robertson. Been reasonably quiet so far. Hasn't had many opportunities, it has to be said. Roberts now kicks inside 50. Up here looking for Lee, and he takes a one-headed mark. About 25 metres out directly in front, up against Rory Mansell. That was a classy one-handed grab. Positioned his body well against Mansell. Mansell was looking for that third man in. He, he, he gave uh, Tommy Ramoth a bit of a spray because he expected Ramoth to come in and help him out because Andy Lee had the drop of the ball and all Ramoth had to do was just put his body in front of Andy Lee. Didn't quite get there. He was a step away. You know, Andrew Lee can kick goals. He kicked a bag full down at Windsor Park a few weeks ago. In he comes. About 25 out. Directly in front. Shoots for goals. Off to the left. Much to the delight of the South Austin cheer squad down there. It's one behind. And that's one he really should have converted. Andy Lee. That's one goal for 10, Bernie. South Monkston 2 6 18. Been playing five minutes into the second quarter as Rory Mansell kicks short out of defence, but it's a good one. Finds Thane Baden Hagen. It's about 40 metres out from defensive goal. He goes off not very confidently, but he uh, finds a teammate on the far side, but can't uh, grab the ball before it bounces over the boundary line. That was Bart McCulloch, so it's a throw in on the railway side of the ground. A good smattering of crowd over there. I'd say it's probably four to 5,000 at least. It's uh, growing all the time. Every time I look out, there seems to be more papers filling the stands. Tap down by Laycock. Shark by Harper. It's on the wing now. Taken by Rudy Barrett. He kicks it straight away. Probably had more time. Kicks inside 50. Looking for and finding Robertson over the back. Yeah, look, I called it, Dave. I called it a minute ago. Robertson, he's taken about three marks this quarter. He's just a little bit smart for Shawnee James. Shawnee James has got the body and he's got the, the strength. And look, he's had a really good season. But against a, a very clever player, Russell Robertson, I reckon... Uh, you know, maybe Mitch Thorpe needs to look at just that matchup, uh, just to see whether it's uh, it's the best for the South Lonnie Bulldogs. Robertson kicking from right on 50, 45 degree angle, gets nice contact, staying towards goal, and it's through. It's a goal to Russell Robinson for the Bernie Dockers. That's their second goal, and it takes them to two goals, 4-16, trailing South Lonston 2-6-18, and that's Russell Robinson's first goal of the day after a strong mark just inside the 50. Looks like Daniel Johncock's in for a tougher quarter. We mentioned how much space he was given. Uh, looks like Bryce Hanover's been uh, given the job on Johncock uh, to lock down on him. He had seven touches. Um, you can see there now he's following him around. He's following him. He's not uh, letting him get any free space. So uh, big job there for Bryce Hanover to uh, lock down on Johncock. I suppose with that, though, it means that maybe it frees someone else up. So you look for a Matt Hanson or a Thane Bardenhagen or someone like that to get a lot of the footy. Down in the centre again. It's Thorpe up against Laycock. Laycock gets it down, tries to get it himself. It's tapped away in the scrimmage. Matt Hanson gets it over to Joby Harper on his left. Scrubby kick off towards uh, the forward flank here. Mitch Hill, 70 metres out from goal. Can't pick it up. Roller Kelly Mansell's there. Hands it to, uh, to Mitch Hill. Who hands it to Matt Hanson. He kicks the 50 metre mark. Zane Brown, clever tap out. Kelly Mansell can't take the ball. Matt Hanson following up. Can. Handball's inside there to Barden Hagen. Drugs a couple of tackles. Gets caught. Poor handball. In fact, it was a throw deemed by the umpire. So a free kick to the Bernie Dockers in defensive 50. Tackling pressure from Bernie. We mentioned the quarter time. It was 21 to uh, 7, the tackles. They've already laid a couple of beauties this quarter. So it's definitely a, uh, a thing that uh, Brent Plant said, look, let's tackle them hard and let's make them stick. And uh, plenty of holding the ball decisions going Bernie's way. Seven and a quarter minutes into the second term in a low-scoring grand final as Nick Walters uh, kicks the ball out wide looking for and finding Clay Hardy. He kicks it on a little bit further to Brad Harvey who marks on the centre wing far side of the ground. As they did in the first quarter, though, they slow the game up around that centre wing position and look for a uh, target inside 50. The target is Laycock, but it's sucked away from him. Trevina has the ball now for the Bulldogs. Handballs are over the top. Running out of the fence there is uh, Hanson. The, the ball is uh, taken off him or it drops out of him, and I think a free kick's going to be paid, and it will, in fact, go to the Bernie Dockers. Another tackle. 
another tackle, another holding the ball. South Launceston are used to having time and space, but unfortunately in grand finals, you don't have as much time and space because the pressure's on. Well, he just lumbered after the ball, really, didn't he? There was no spark or, or, or uh, eagerness about the step as he went towards. I think he thought he had a lot of time, and he didn't. Andrew Lee, it's going to be a tight opportunity for him. It's right where Bulldog had that shot a couple of weeks ago. Right on the 50, he breaks it. He kicks it right to the top of the goal square. Won't quite Brady make it, Gray. but there's a mark. Gray, who marked in the first quarter under similar circumstances, all by himself in front of the pack, does the same in the second. He kicked a goal on that first. He'll kick a goal here because the man on the mark's only three metres out. He just turns around, pops it over his shoulder, and the doctors hit the lead for the first time in the ball game. Three goals, 6-22. South Lawrence has in 2-6-18. Eight and three quarter minutes into the second term. I mentioned he's dangerous around goal, Brady Gray, but there's a mark in the in the uh, in the goal square unattended he just read the ball again coming in it was short the same at the other end before he read the ball coming in and uh, he took a mark unattended he's playing a different role to what we've seen him playing in previous look he, he he does tend to play a little bit higher up the ground but uh, he is a goal kicker and as i said at north hobart earlier in the year he kicked a bag of seven uh, he's kicked uh, you know five or six goals at west park here and there he's got terrific pace uh trevita's on him at the moment he's gonna have to lock down on him because he's an explosive player brady gray so for the first time in the grand final the bernie dockers are in front by four points down in the center picked up there by matt hansen streams forward poor kick forward though doesn't advantage his forwards. It slips through past Mitch Hills and Mitch Thorpe. McKenna's there. Tries to get a handball away. He's tackled. It's out of bounds about 30 metres around from South Launceston goal. So it's a tight contest here. Probably a bit tighter than we expected. And uh, South Launceston now uh, find themselves four points in arrears. Boundary throw in. Up goes Laycock up against Mitch Hills. Comes to ground. Cade Mundia can't take it. A pack of four players dive on the ball. It's not going to escape from there in a hurry. So it'll be a ball up 40 metres out from the South Launceston goal. Lots of uh, rotations there on the interchange as Eli Templeton comes back on with Skippy Child. Mitch Hills kicks smothered as he attempts a shot and goal. Now uh, picked up here by Zane Brown. He can't take possession. Laycock, a long handball out of the pack. Out towards John Cock. John Cock takes the ball, oh. uses it, and a strong tackle there by Child on Hanavir. And Hanavir will take the free kick in uh, halfback position. Kicks forward, finds Lee out in front of Rory Mansell. He's now pretty much on centre wing. Looks forward, a crowd of players in front of him. Tries to find a short pass here towards Robinson. Well cut out there by Dylan Riley. Taken over the back by Sean James, but he runs the ball out of bounds right in front of us here on the RACT stand. You listen to the TSL Grand Final on Sea Park Radio. David Moore, Matthew McGee and Barry Triffitt bring you all the action. It's Bernie by four points. Ten and a half minutes into the second quarter. Boundary throw in. Neither Ruckman get a finger to it. Spills over the back. Taken there by Child. Child handballs to Brown. Brown gets through traffic. Nice short kick there to Harper. Kicks about a hand pass to Matt Hanson. Decides not to. Kicks instead up here looking for Mitch Thorpe, who's got heavy attention from McKenna. Neither can take the mark. Thorpe recovers. Kicks around the corner and finds Payne Payne Bardenhagen. Bardenhagen, who's about 25 metres out from goal, 45 degree angle. He's having a terrific influence on the contest, Mitchell Thorpe. Every time the ball's gone to him, he's, uh, he's beaten McKenna or he's beaten uh, Andy Lee earlier on. And he's uh, he's setting up a lot of goal scoring opportunities for his side. Okay. Barton Hagen's playing all right today too, man. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. I said he was quiet the other week. Yep. And uh, it was his first final to chat to him. And he said, look, it was just struggle to get into the game. But he's, uh, he's, he's just going through the goal. On that goal hat. Straight through there from Thane Barton Hagen, kicking from about 30 metres out. And that's uh, South Monston back in front now. They go to 3 6 24. Bernie 3 4 22 as the uh, school board operator puts the goal to the wrong team. Lucky we're on the ball up here in the uh, City Park Radio commentary team, Macca. That's right. Uh, Bardenhag is playing a little bit more in the uh, centre square as well. He's, uh, he's playing a little bit more on ball. Uh, him and Ryland Coombe and blokes like that are doing a few switches there. Uh, uh, Matt Hansen, uh, interested after uh, the last game, a GPS Matt Hansen after the last game, he ran 15 uh, point something kilometres in the game, which is a terrific effort from an 18 year old boy. And uh, from the bounce down, it's uh, Laycock who tries to get hand the ball, but Eli Templeton runs on to it, gets it out in the Hislop direction. Here lose John Cock, who's gone quiet in this quarter. And there's the Hislop kick now in towards a half forward, looking for Andy Lee as he marks it. Yes, mark. the umpire said he has. He tumbled to the ground with the ball. He got his. Uh, arm and elbow just under it enough to uh, stop it from touching the green stuff that being the grass we had a better view of it than the umpire i think i think the umpire might have guessed whereas uh, we saw it and it was definitely a mark so andrew lee almost kicked the goal here about uh, three or four minutes ago that was the one that gray marked right in the goal square this time he's about 20 meters closer so the distance will be more favorable for him 
What breeze there is will help it push back towards the goals. There's his kick. It's very good off the boot. We watch it go straight through for a major. It's a seesaw affair at uh, Aurora Stadium. Just Bernie now go to 4-4, 28. They're back in front. They lead by four points south of three goals, 6-24. And we're halfway through the second quarter of the grand final. Centre clearance, wasn't it? It was straight out of there, straight on to Andrew Lee, leading out uh, here towards the RACT stand and uh, an outstanding shot for goal. Andy Lee, you know, we, we, we saw him start uh, back, full back, and now he's uh, now he's up at full forward, and that's uh, that's what uh, Brett Plant can do. He can uh, he can swing McKenna and Andrew Lee. They're their two swing men, and, uh, and they're causing a few issues down there, the uh, uh, the Bernie Ford line. All of a sudden, it's a dangerous looking forward line, isn't it? Bernie? It is, it is. With Andrew Lee, you look down there now, it's Lee, Shackleton, Hayes, Gray, and Robertson. They're all starting deep with a heap of space in front of them. Well, from the tap down, uh, Clay Hardy runs onto it, gives it to Templeton. Templeton get the force to go backwards. They're on their half-back line now, Bernie, although they still have possession of the ball. Hurried kick out of that defensive zone in the Brad Harvey direction. He thumps it to the boundary line and at the same time goes over the interchange and uh, comes off the ground. And his teammate in Cade Monday comes back on for him. The boundary umpire will throw it in right in front of that interchange. And it's a pretty hot to trot area down there today as players come on and off the ground uh, all throughout the quarter the ball over the back in the Joby Harper direction the big fella bullocks his way in somehow manages to get a half uh, handball out in the Blackbury direction fakes it with the left hand then runs back onto his left boot chips it in towards half forward looking for Hills he can't take the mark but he's clever enough to uh, try and swing it around and smother it off the boot though Breaks down to the running Hanson. Hanson gets a handball onto Brown. Brown onto the right boot. See Thorpe out wide. Beautiful vision. Kicks it. Pinpoint pass. He had no time there to alter his direction. That was sensational stuff. Kicks it out to Mitchell Thorpe, who will line up from 25 metres. And Mitch Thorpe came on the ground, Macca, and he meandered around the ground and nobody really <laughs> picked him up for about two or three minutes. Ah, look, he's clever. I was thinking, where was Nick McKenna? And I looked out, and McKenna's actually got McCulloch because Thorpe come off the ground. He spent about 30 seconds off, and he went back on, like you know, like a little sneaky kid trying to sneak around the back. And he did. It was fantastic uh, play, and now he's having a shot for goal. Hasn't kicked a goal yet today. He's missed a couple in the first quarter. An opportunity here at the 15-minute mark of the second quarter. He lines it up. He likes it. Throws both fists in the air and he kicks his first for the day. And the South Launceston 4 6 30. They're back in front. They lead by two points. Bernie a 4 4 28 in a seesawing affair here at Aurora Stadium. Yeah, it's a great battle at the moment. You can't Fantastic really tell uh, who's going to win at this stage. And, uh, you know, that's what we come for. It's a grand final. It's uh, Bernie versus South Launceston, one versus two. Uh, Laycox back in the ruck up against Cody Thorpe. And, you know, some terrific battles all across the ground. I'm really enjoying it. And I hope our listeners are too. Back in the centre again. Uh, South Austin by two points. Leeds have changed hands a number of times here in the second quarter. Down goes the ball. Knocked down there by Cody Thorpe. Gets it to Harper who doesn't take possession. Spills out towards Rice of Bernie. He can't take possession either. Coming out now for South Launceston. Matt Hanson. Matt Hanson. Thanks, Macca. Matt Hanson on the left. Kicks up here towards Thorpe who has a bit of a break on his opponent. McKenna. He has a fair way out from goal. But uh, earlier in the season, Matthew, we saw a game where, oh, look, he, where Mitch Thorpe slotted about three or four of these at Windsor Park, if you remember rightly. He, he's the most influential, influential player on the ground at the moment. Every time the ball goes in his vicinity, either has a shot or uh, or he, he gives it off to someone else. He took four marks in the first quarter. I reckon he's had four or five this quarter. So up ten up to you know halfway through the second quarter. To set the scene for our listeners, he's right on the boundary on the left-hand side of Ford, po- uh, Ford Pocket. Shooting for goal. It'll be a good this one here. It'll be a good kick. Kicking for about 48 metres out. It's just going to miss to the near side. So it's one behind to South Oxton. 4 7 31. Leading Bernie 4 4 28. And we've been playing 16 and three quarter minutes in the second quarter. I think the loyal Bernie Docker supporters might have been giving you a bit of advice from over the fence there. He looked around and, uh, yeah. And of course, as we know, Mitch just thrives on that sort of thing, doesn't <laughs> he? Harry Walters to Nick Walters. Further afield to his lot. And now just outside 50 on uh, the far side of the ground. A lot of patrons over there enjoying the bar underneath uh, the scoreboard on the railway side of the ground. Kick down the line. Bernie player there can't take the mark. Kick off the ground towards Jay Blackbury who takes possession. Off to Alex Russell. He's been a little bit quiet. His kick smothered. Goes back towards Russell. Takes the ball with bravery. Gets it out again. Great play, Alex Russell. Handballs over there towards Dylan Riley on the far side. I think he might have tackled high by Nick Walters. The fact that Skippy Child over there on the far side of the ground. And, uh, Cody Thorpe and Jason Laycock having a bit of a go. The emergency umpire was out on the ground. I was about to say, there hasn't been a lot of that sort of stuff right. going on so far. Kick up towards the half-forward flank and uh, free kick in the making contest. It's going to Rory Mansell in unfamiliar territory. He's about two kicks out from goal. Plays on quickly. Up looking for Jamie Harper inside 50 and he takes the mark. It's going to be a tough shot for goal. He's about 10 metres in from the boundary. 
from the uh, railway side pocket. And he's about 30 metres out, is Joby Harper. Well, that was a sensational <laughs> kick, uh, Dave. That would be well, centimetre perfect, and it was. Good contest on the wing there, too, from Alex Russell. He, uh, two or three contests against bigger, physically bigger opponents, and uh, he kept the ball in possession. Here comes Joby Harper now, kicking from about 30 out. Kicked it's, it. I think he's kicked it, hasn't no. he? No. Umpire strikes his breast. Oh, I was watching so Joby give it the big fist yeah. pump, and I thought, oh, no, he's got it. It's one behind, so another opportunity missed there for Southmont. It's a tough one, though. It's 4-8-32 to Bernie, 4 4 28. That's a short kick in comes. Straight to Cade Monday. That's a set play, that one. It's usually Bannum to Monday. And it's Bannum now with the ball. Deep in defence for the Dockers. Tries to play on, gets around Blackberry with a handball back to Monday. Monday tries to get around the opponent, does. That's Rory Mansell. Monday kicks along the line. Look up there for Laycock and also Andy Lee who takes the mark. He darts off straight away. Has a teammate over the top, but the handball is smothered. Taken by Coombe to John Cock. We'll get it back to Coombe who's under pressure. Kicks quickly along the line, but he kicks without uh, purpose and finds Caleb Hislop on the wing. Young Caleb Hislop, one of the younger brigade for the Dockers. Kicks up towards the 50. Good position of the body here by Dylan Riley. He takes a solid mark right on the paint of 50 in defence. He darts off laterally. Handball's over there towards Drake. Drake now to Hills. He can get it back to Drake if he wants, and he does. Clinton Drake now steaming off half back. Gets a kick away towards Trevino, who can't quite take the mark. Wasn't a good kick. McKenna scored him well. Tries to follow up tackle on Riley, but he's too strong. Riley back to Hanson, who's had a lot of the ball this quarter. He lined up in the Short center pass corner. Short pass there to Drake, who fumbles. Now it could be a turnover here. Yeah. Drake fights on for the ball. Gets it back again. Hands it out the back to Hanson. The umpire saw the throw. Free kick, Bernie Dock with centre wing. Barry Trippett. Crucial skill error there. South Lons has lined up in the centre corner and they missed the target. Now it's turned over to Brady Gray. And Gray with the ball. Kicks in the shack in direction. The big fellow's got three opponents there. Taken here by Riley. South Lons has under the pump. Shackleton and... Um, Shiverton still in there rather than the ball comes out the back and it's uh, taken out by numbers through South Lonses and the kick out of defence finds Quentin Drake on half back line gets it off uh, to that uh, very good player in this quarter there in Matt Hanson deep on the uh, boundary line he puts it and in fact it might have been just touch the uh, boundary umpire in perfect position right on interchange said that was touched fellas will throw it in spot on there Barry with uh, Matt Hanson he's been fantastic this quarter uh, he's keeping them in the game in and around the clearances for an 18 year old kid it's a tremendous effort McCulloch in there doing the ruck work now for South doesn't get a very decisive tap down and heads towards the John Cock direction John Cock can't pick it up he's under pursuit ends up with Blackbury on the left boot now kicks it deep and long towards the top of the goal square South wants that some player lurking can't quite take possession of the ball Alex Russell but he's clever enough to get a second opportunity and misses it. <laughs> oh dear oh dear he's they're offering away some opportunities South 10-9-33, Bernie 4-4-28 from the kick in, it's long, it's direct, it's in the centre of the ground towards Dylan Smith, over the top, oh Bernie got numbers everywhere, it ends up back with Smith, he takes a bounce, runs to 50, kicks long from 50, this could be the uh, coast to coast, he missed, they're all missing here at the Aurora Stadium at the, the moment. Goal post this week, I, think. I tell you what, there's been a lot of opportunities, talk about uh, grand final nerves, but uh, both sides are filtering away opportunities. Bernie a five, a four goals, five twenty-nine. South a four nine thirty-three from the kick in, taken by Joby Harper. He gets the ball, goes out wide. South Launceston on the far side of the ground now, with possession of the ball. The quick hands coming inside there, looking for Will Hanson. The ball is taken here by Clinton Drake. Drake gets it on a little bit further towards Jade Child. Child is set upon and is too high. He gets a free kick just outside fifty. Handballs off to John Cock, who's been quiet in the second quarter. Beautiful kick with the left boot, looking for Brown. It's too long for that player. It's over the back to Hanson. Handballs out wide here, looking for the coach in Thorpe. Thorpe kicks from 45 metres out to the top of the goal square. There's two or three Bulldogs up there, but the defence of Bernie, strong. Running out of defence there now is Clint Riley. Takes a bounce, gets it onto his uh, teammate running there in Clay Hardy. Hardy gets it out a little bit further. Here go the Dockers down the railway side of the ground. South Launceston under the pump. Quick hands inside to Lee. Kicks it towards the top of the 50 and running onto it there is Brad Harvey. He drops it. It goes to ground level. A lap. Hardy at the bottom of the pack. Will he be pinned for holding the ball? Yes, he will. A free kick for South Launceston at centre half back. And uh, balls and centre back, Jane. Zane Little Johns joined us at Contry as Matthew goes down to Oskick, so you hear here some of his comments in just a moment. But the ball's now with Matt Hansen. And so right on the paint of defensive 50. Gets the carry on the top to Ryland Coon. He chips over the top there looking for Harper who has space. Decides to not run on as uh, Sam Rice takes the mark there. 
Harper kicks dangerously there for Brown. Doesn't make with him on the half volley. Spills to Brady Gray. Takes a bounce. Gets around two opponents. He's going to be tackled a third time by Harper. Gets the handball away just in time, but he's tackled illegally, says the umpire. And um, it's over the shoulder. Thanks, Baz. This next goal is really important, isn't it, guys? It's yeah. sort of been a, a bit of an arm wrestle here for the last five minutes. So wh whoever can get this next goal, I think it's going to give them a bit of momentum going into the second half here. Free kick over the shoulder. Brady Gray. He's about 52, 53 metres out when he takes the kick. He's a long way up, but he's a good kick of the footy. He's going to have a go at it. It's a 45 degree angle. Comes in now, doesn't get to make the distance. Uh, falls inside the goal square. Fisted away by the south defence, Rory Mansell. Falls to Brad Harvey. Puts his head down. Gets a handball away to nobody in particular. Runners needed. Bursting out of defence here, I think, is uh, Jamie Harper. Takes the ball. Evades a tackle. Handball actually looks for Kelly Mansell. Kelly Mansell hands it on now to Bardenhagen. Bardenhagen kicks up for the wing to Mitch Thorpe, who has acres of space. Way out in front of Mick McKenna. He has a man further on in the overlap. And taking the mark over there for South is Cody Thorpe. In fact, he doesn't take the mark off hands. It was a relatively easy mark, no pressure. And uh, I think he thought he had pressure on him. You can really tell, the, uh, really tell the tempo's up in, in this last sort of 10 minutes. I mean, a lot of little just fumble skill errors that both sides, I guess, haven't done all year. So the tempo is right up and it's fantastic to watch. Great game here at Aura Stadium. This is State Wide League Grand Final. South 33, Bernie 29. Ball's in dispute. That's about uh, two kicks out from the South Oxford goal. So it'll be a ball up. Yes, the next goal is vital, is it, Zane? Either way. Super important. I, yeah. I, I know Mitch mentioned it uh, at quarter time about really making sure Bernie going at half time really tired, but I think they'll be tired too because there's been a truckload of work done by both sides. That's right. So another stoppage coming up. There's the ball forced ground. In fact, I think the umpires have picked out a free kick. It's going to go to Thane Bardenhagen. He plays on immediately and finds his fellow midfielder, Blackberry. He's inside the centre square. He's guarded there by Dylan Smith, so he can't run on. Kicks laterally, finds Wiley Coon. There's a few options. Decides that to stop. He might kick long inside 50 now. No, he looks for a target out here. Just outside the paint of 50, and Dylan Wiley can't take the mark. Spills to Monday. He's got no one to kick it to, so he decides to handball to a teammate under pressure, Ryan Bulldog. He can't take the ball away, so it's South Lots in numbers now. Drake to Raymouth. Takes too long over his kicks. Gets smothered. Monday gets a funny little handball away, but it's taken here by Tom Raymouth. Gets a kick away just in time before Harvey got on the scene. Kicks inside 50 to give him a culloch. Off hands. Recovers well. Off to Cody Thorpe. Tries to get around an opponent. Gets tackled. Gets a handball back towards McCulloch. He's under pressure. Gets a handball further afield towards Russell. Handball's up in the air quickly. Taking it out now for defence. With a lot of dash was Harry Walters. But the siren sounds just as he was coming away and launching an attack there for the Bernie Dockers. In fact, it was Tyrone Morrison with the ball there. And the siren sounds for half time here at Aurora Stadium. And the score is South Launceston, four goals, 9.33, as I just turned down our effects a bit, to Bernie, four goals, 5.29. And that quarter, once again, going just over 25 minutes. So uh, quite short quarters, quite a low-scoring grand final and uh, high-pressure game. Barry Triffitt, goal kickers for half-time. Oh, Mike there, sorry about that, Dave. And um, I think 10 points at quarter time has probably been the biggest margin in the game. I think it changed about nine. Dave, and uh, very exciting down the ground with the little lost kickers. Had a great time. A couple of things I can tell you from the ground. There's definitely a couple of goal wind heading towards South Launceston uh, in this quarter. And also Bart McCulloch, a real issue with the uh, with the thigh. Barry Triffitt, City Park Radio Sport. We're underway in the uh, second half of the grand final and there's a free kick straight away to Caleb Hislop here in the centre of the ground for the Bernie Dockers. He will kick to the Invermay Park end. They're going in this uh, third quarter if you've just joined us. But the ball's been intercepted by uh, Blackberry. And he was terrific in the first quarter for the Bulldogs. And he kicks this beautifully into Brown, who will mark 40 metres from goal directly in front. He's a magnificent left foot kick, is uh, Jay Blackbury. There's not all that much of him, but he just pinpoints his left foot kick. When left footers kick beautifully, the, there's nothing better on the footy field. And he's one of those. He was balanced beautifully on that occasion. Brown made space at the back of his opponent. He didn't lead out in front. He ran to the bank. Clint Riley was his opponent, and it was just a beautiful pass that ended up in his lap. And he will line up directly in front, taking plenty of time over it. The umpire tells him to get a bit of a hurry on. He kicks it, skews it a little bit to the right, and just manages to go through for a minor score. So like they started in the first quarter, South Launceston, they kicked five points before they kicked a goal. In this uh, third quarter, they've already kicked a point. It's uh, Harry Walters who plays to himself out of the defensive zone, kicks it to himself and then gets it on to Eli Templeton. He just directly goes back where the ball came from and they'll go around the outer flank on the far side of the Bernie Dockers as marking it out there now is Clint Riley. 
It's uh, Darren Benham, rather. Benham is in the last line of defence, and he's kicked that far and wide looking for Laycock, and has kicked it out of bounds on the full. As I said, uh, the wind is actually going down towards that pocket where the ball is now over towards the uh, Inverest building. And it, as I said, it is a couple of goals. So yeah. South will want to have a nice lead up their sleeve at three-quarter time. Well, there's Cody Thorpe makes the uh, kick in. Kicks it towards his brother Mitch. Hop the top of the pack to Trevina up in the forward line. He's uh, set upon by three Burnie defenders. And the umpire says we'll throw it up right in front of goal. Forgot to mention half time that uh, we've got an award today for the best player on the ground for the grand final. A $50 voucher courtesy of Paul Woods from Nick 19 in Abbott Street, just down the road from the Relish Cafe, who supplied us with some great food in the box here today. Back to you, Barry. Yes, five points of difference at the uh, two minute mark of the third term, and Gray's got the ball just inside his defensive zone there for uh, Burnie. Gets it out to Shackleton, who falls over. A little bit further out now to Cade Monday. He kicks it in the Robertson direction. Is a long way from goal. He's away down on centre wing, railway side of the ground. Turns around and kicks it over in front of the scoreboard. Looking for a teammate, but there's nothing there. It's just all South Launceston defence. Cade Monday's filthy with Russell Robertson there because he ran on and had a, uh, had a quick one over the top, and uh, Robertson ignored him. That was South's probably better player in uh, Matt Hanson, who marked that ball. Kicks it out a little bit wider to uh, Corey Mansell, and he takes it and then kicks it further on to, uh, looks like Hill. Hills. Yeah, yep. Hills on the far side there now as he uh, just steadies it down. Oh, he's kicked it a mile into the air. It's not going to travel all that far. That allows the defenders in, and somehow, Barton Hagen in front of the pack has been awarded the free kick. A little bit fortunate, I would have thought, on centre wing, far side of the ground. Opportunity to kick the Bulldogs inside their 50. Runs himself into trouble, then handballs over the top. Looking for uh, Matt Hanson, puts him under the pump. Quick handball out there, now goes in the uh, Kelly Mansell direction. He kicks it in towards uh, Russell, but it's too long for that player. And taking the mark beautifully on the chest, there is Dan and Bannum in the last line for the Dockers. Darren Bannum kicks it across the ground, finds Harry Walters. He plays on immediately, has Caleb Hislop out here on the wing. But he's caught beautifully there by oh. Zane Brown. Ball spills to the ground. Caleb Hislop takes it again. Hatches the ball underneath him. And you can hear the crowd say ball. And that's what it's going to be. It's going to be a free kick here to uh, Zane Brown of South Launceston. That was unbelievable. The umpire didn't play front on contact there. Oh, Zane yeah. Brown did not have his eye on the ball. Brown uh, continues he goes in. looking for Russell. And he takes the mark. 35 metres out directly in front. Yeah, just going back to that. Yep. It, was, it, was a, it was an amazing call. And then to ping the poor fellow, hey, Islop, uh, for holding the footy. Um, and then Bernie were just a little bit too uh, occupied with the umpire and uh, having a bit of a crack, and they left Russell uh, all alone, uh, 30 yeah. metres out directly in front. Yeah, acres of space there. Tell you what, this is a really important kick. You know, this gives them a bit of a bit of up and about, a bit of uh, enthusiasm. Former St Patrick's College student Alex Russell moving into goal, 30 metres out directly in front, shoots for goal. Umpire moves a bit to the right, but the crowd say yes, that's a goal. The crowd behind the goal with the South Launceston streamers tell us the story and that's a goal there to Alex Russell of South Launceston and they move on to five goals 10-40 uh, to Bernie four goals 5-29 11 point lead as I said Bernie were just uh, a little bit occupied with the umpire and uh, Alex Russell just stood there in amongst uh, four or five Bernie players who weren't interested in the ball and he just uh, he took a really good mark and then uh, and then kicked the goal beautifully from 30 out directly in front what a great thing that uh, John Cox not running with uh, Hanover at the moment uh, we, we said that uh, John Cock only had three touches in that quarter, but uh, looks as though he slops uh, on John Cock at the moment. So two really good outside runners. A tremendous contest out here on the on the uh, near wing. Back in centre again, Cody Thorpe gets it down, looking here for both Thorpe, who's been quiet, but he can't pick it up. Taken away by Caleb Hislop, wheels around, kicks across the wing now, looking for Sam Rice, who takes the mark, plays on immediately. He kicks inside 50, looking there towards Robinson, and Robinson takes oh. a one-handed mark. Beautiful mark. All that experience once again. Up against his opponent there in uh, Sean James. Took the one-headed mark, protecting uh, the space there with his body. And he'll be shooting for goal. Similar sort of uh, shot to goal that we just saw Alex Russell have. He's about 35 to 40 metres out. Slight angle. Off to the right of centre. In comes Robinson. Kicked four last week. One of the key players for the Bernie team. As he kicks up towards full forward. Doesn't make the distance. Pushing out there by Andrew Lee. Not seen by the umpire. On the ground now with the South Austin defence. Will Hanson takes it. He kicks outside 50. Funny old kick. Nearly finds Cody Thorpe though. He handballs directly to a opponent, Dylan Smith, who's tackled. Loses the ball, not penalised. Both Thorpe picks it up. Weaves through a couple of tackles. Ineffective handball in the end. Back to Dylan Smith. He tries to uh, evade a tackle, but he's tackled to the ground. 
That'll be a ball up. Ugly passage to play there. About 40 metres out from the Bernie goal. Thrown up immediately by the umpire. Cody Thorpe gets it down. Knocked on them further by both Thorpe. Shackleton tries to take the ball. Can't do so. Picked up by Joby Harper. He's tackled by Eli Templeton. That'll be another ball up. This time just outside the paint of 50. Directly out from the South Launceston goal. You can uh, feel the excitement down on ground level. There's people there. They're talking about how Bernie in the game. Is South Lonnie going to go away? They're, they're really, really interested in this game, the, uh, the supporters. Laycock takes the ball. He's tackled, though, as he handballs. It spills to the back to Nick Walters. Pushes away from a couple of tackles. Beautiful handball over towards the paint of 50. On now towards Caleb Islop. He tries to find Rob Robinson inside 50, and he does. No, he's not paid the mark. Could have held on it long enough. No, says the umpire. Taken away by James. Long kick down the wing. Over there looking for Kelly Mansell. Over his head. Has the better recovery. Has the ball in front of him. Picks it up. Looks behind. Sees that he has space. Then kicks inside 50. Looking once again for Alex Russell. Can't take the mark. Harry Walters knocks it away. Russell recovers. Handball's over the top to a teammate in Kelly Mansell. Surrounded by Bernie defenders. Bernie now on the rebound through Bannum. He has a player out here. I think it's uh, Rice, is it? No, it's not. It's Hanavir. Bounces over his head. McCulloch can't take the ball. Handball's out of the pack. Well, though, towards uh, Dylan Riley. But it's deemed a throw by the umpire. Free kick to Dylan Smith on the ten and a half back for Bernie. He just can't go, Bart McCulloch. He's, he's just putting in that much effort, but that uh, that thigh is heavily strapped. And he just can't quite get there, and he, he gave away that free kick to throw him. Well, it's right in front of interchange. Andy Lee's held the ball a long time. The umpire allows him to uh, play on with it, though. Why that wasn't holding the ball is beyond me. It's still in there. South Launceston's pile, players pile on top, and eventually the umpire says we'll toss it skyward, fellas. Right in front of the interchange at the eight-minute mark of the third term. McCulloch in there doing the ruck, and he couldn't even get off the ground. He just strolled in, but somehow the ball went towards Trevina, who uh, catapulted himself across the ground with the, with the ball, and it's over the boundary line of throwing to take place. Now McCulloch in the ruck at the moment. It's quite evident there to me that he couldn't get off the ground. Laycock comes in. He can't get off the ground again. He's definitely hampered by something. And uh, the ball goes in the Bernie Dockers' direction, taken away by Cade Monday. Puts it onto his left boot, kicks in towards half forward. Oh, Gray takes another great mark. He's taken four or five today. He's too far from goal to kick at one this time, though. He's about 60, 70 metres out. Kicks it in the Russell, Russell Robinson direction. Goes over the back of the pack, heads towards the uh, goal line and trickles through for a minor score. Bernie, uh, four goals, 6.30. South line says in a 5 10 40. There's a 10 point margin at the eight and a half minute mark. And here goes uh, Riley, uh, Riley out of defence now for the Bulldogs. Kicks it out uh, wide on the far flank there looking for Mitchell Hills. He's got it about 70 metres from goal. It's a long bomb right at the top of the square where Russell flies. Can't take the mark. Punched away by Walters. Goes towards the boundary line. And there'll be a throw in right alongside of the Hoyt post. And for the first time today, we can see a little bit of an altercation taking place deep in the forward pocket for the Bulldogs. Boundary umpire throws it in beautiful sunny conditions now at Aurora Stadium. Laycock just puts fist the ball, but it goes in the Blackberry direction. Knocked away from him there by Rudy Barrett. Barrett puts it on the right boot and long bombs it out of the fence and puts it out of bounds on the full. Ball over there now with Jay Child. He's uh, far too far out to score. Kicks in towards uh, half forward there, looking for Mansell. He takes it just outside 50. Butters up, runs towards, has a long shot from 40 metres out, comes off hands and through for a minor score. Matt Hansen uh, kicked it in, I think, did he? Yeah, he did. He continues to rack him up, Matt Hansen. Looks like Clint Riley might have gone to him uh, this quarter, who's the designated tagger for Bernie. So it's a big uh, it's a big plus for Matt Hansen that uh, Brett Plant's got the respect for him to uh, send his number one tagger. Harry Walters to Bannum. Bannum then kicks it back to Harry Walters just outside 50. That's a good set play there by the Bernie Dockers out of defence. He stops and props. He's attended to by Mitch Thorpe, so he has to go back to Bannum. He takes a diving mark back inside the defence of 50. He plays on now, kicks from the paint and kicks up towards the wing. There's McCulloch who gets off the ground this time and takes a mark in front of Andrew Lee. He and Laycock both decided not to go for the mark there and looked at each other afterwards. As uh, Bart McCulloch kicks it to Matt Hansen. Matt Hansen further along to Zane Brown. Bart McCulloch coming for the ground. We'll get you in a minute, Macca. Poor kick from Brown, but it does find Will Hansen. Back to Dan Jonko, who's been very quiet since quarter time. Dangerous hand pass to Zane Brown. Gets it off immediately to Matt Hansen. We're about two kicks out from goal here. South Lots new attack. Kicks laterally there, finds Child, Child long kick inside 50, only one player there to fly for it for South, he can't take it down, it spills to uh, Will Hansen who kicks the goal, he can't get it, Step there by Child, Dylan Riley, Dylan, Dylan, Riley, gets back at Dylan Riley to a 39, kicks it from inside oh, the goal square, Nick McKenna, hey, look at him, the bearded one, he's gone up to umpire number 6, and he's just saying what is happening here, I reckon 
we don't want the umpires to have influence over the game, but I reckon that was a mark at least or something there. There's been about three opportunities this quarter where there's been front-on contact, and yep. they're just not paying it. So, yep. look, I suppose if they're not going to pay it, continue on. I was about to say before that uh, goal was kicked, um, the kick in by uh, by Child didn't need to go long. It went long, and there yeah. was actually three Bernie blokes there. He needed to lower his eyes. But in the end, McKenna probably should have taken the mark. wasn't paid, and uh, Dylan Riley uh, has come off half-back and snapped uh, a very exciting goal. Good crumbing there by the South Austin forwards. Back in the middle again. We've been playing 11 and three-quarter minutes in the third quarter. South Launceston out to the biggest lead of the day, 17 points. Good tap to the middle by Laycott. Finds Monday. Kicks the paint of 52, Braden Hayes. He's been quiet today. He tries to get round Drake. Short little kick inside 50. Finds Robinson, but he's tackled immediately by James. Good tackle. He's tackled over the boundary line. It'll be a throw in about 35 metres around from the Bernie goal. Macca. Uh Word down from Sean Mountney on the boundaries that uh, Sam Rice has been subbed off and uh, Plant is into the game. Okay, so James Plant has come into the game for Rice there of Bernie. As Tebbledon has a quick snap for goal. It's inside the goal square there. Lee can't take the mark. Good battle there with uh, his opponent, in Kelly Mansell, I think it is. No, it's Will Hanson. But the ball spills out of bounds just around from the behind post. It's South Boston by 17 points final part of the game here. They wouldn't want the margin to get out too much further, the Dockers. Boundary throw-in. Laycock gets it down, unopposed, but can't find anybody at the fall of the ball. Taken by Harper. Evades a tackle, then a long torpedo outside defensive 50. Up there is Mitch Thorpe, and he takes a great mark over the top of Cade Monday on his chest. Wayne Carey-like there. As he's up from behind. Kicks along the wing looking for Mitch Hills. He can't take the ball. Spills over the back. John Cox there. Close attention oh. is James Plant. Could have been out in the full. But uh, no, says the umpire. It's going to be a throw-in right in front of us here. Good to see Daniel Johncock. He's working harder this quarter to actually get involved in the footy. Even though he's getting uh, tagged, he's working harder to uh, get involved. Boundary throw, and it's Mitch Hills against McKenna. Hills gets it down towards Hanson. Uh, sorry, Hanavier's there. He can't take it away. He's tackled the ground by three South opponents. Spills out the back of the pack. Maybe a ball up. Pretty much uh, just forward of the wing. South Lancaster is slightly into attack. Barry Triffitt. Right in front of the broadcasting position. McKenna in there doing the ruck with Hills. Ball goes back to ground. There'll be a second rebound. Just while we have a th- uh, break in play, that's great that our coverage is going to all parts of Australia. Former uh, Premiership player Brent Dean up at Harvey Bay is listening in and loving the coverage, boys. There's the ball back on uh, ground level there again, and it's uh, Clint Riley who takes it to the ground, and he's pushed into the back, and, but he's not going to get a free kick because there's about six players there as well. And the umpire says, we'll just toss it up, fellas, and see if we can get on with it from there. There it goes up. About six players trying to do the ruck work, and about ten at ground level. Oh, it's an ugly passage of play, this. There's going to be another whistle and another throw-up right in front of us. Now, the last minute and a half, the ball has not moved out of a 20-metre circle here, let me tell you. It's going nowhere. The umpire is now telling them, for goodness sake, get out and give everyone a bit of room. Uh, Mitchell Hills gets in front. It goes over the back there to Bannum. Bannum can't get rid of it. There's a free kick up on. That'll get rid of it. That'll get it out of here. Child. He'll take it for uh, South Launceston. And the Bulldogs. He's right in front of us on the broadcasting side of the ground. Kicks in towards half forward. He's looking for McCulloch, but it's uh, too long. Push. Free kick. Well, the umpire was plane. in A1 condition. He was five metres from the pack. And alongside. 50. He's been back chatted. There'll be a kick for goal right on the line. Bart uh, McCulloch will kick a goal here for the Bulldogs. Nick McKenna uh, has given away a couple of free kicks. He just doesn't like the umpire's calls. But that's going to cost his side a goal now, Nick McKenna. We expect more from a senior player like that. Bart McCulloch on one leg goes back from a metre out and kicks the goal. 7-11-53 South Launceston, the biggest lead of the game. The Premiership quarter, the third quarter. They've almost doubled their score from half time in the first 15 minutes. Bernie, four goals, 6-30. And they were 4-5 at halftime, so they just kicked the one behind in this third term. 23 points, Matthew. It's getting out to dangerous sort of levels. Yeah, look, funny you should say that, Dave. I was, I was thinking that, uh, you know, 23 points, yeah, need another goal, that's 30 points. It's, uh, it's going to be big. I was thinking about McCulloch. You know, he's only on one leg. Do you just play him out of the square and be dangerous because they've got plant on, and to be honest, but now they put McCulloch into the ruck and he can't jump, but he's just going to uh, provide a battle. So, look, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic uh, effort from McCulloch. You just see around the ball there, he just... He just goes on one leg, the poor fella. He's running on adrenaline at the moment as the uh, ball up was knocked out by Laycock. His scrimmage, uh, scrimmage uh, followed. Now Caleb Hislop has got the free kick, just the defensive side of the centre circle. He kicks forward to the ball, looking over there for Clint Riley. He's been very quiet. Handball's over to Bannerman, who fumbles, looking for the next opportunity to get the ball away. But he gets it back now to Clint Riley. He kicks along the wing, looking for a teammate there in Lee. 
but uh, beats him out of bounds. I was going to say, uh, Graham McCulloch, uh, Bart's dad's a horse trainer. He probably wouldn't allow a racehorse to uh, be a bit lame uh, like that for Big Bartholomew. Bounty throw in. Yeah, two kicks out from goal. As, uh, ball comes to the back. Caleb is locked. Kicked around the corner quickly inside 50. Chaos ball, but uh, it's taken there by Will Hanson out the front of Brady Gray. Will Hanson plays on immediately. Looks further wide. Over there towards, uh, that's Sean James. Leads the race of the ball. He goes to pick it up. He fumbles at the last moment. Robinson, who Lloyd is behind, takes the ball, dives on the ball, gets it out towards Eli Templeton. Templeton now takes the ball, kicks it up towards centre-half forward. Over there looking for a teammate there in Gray. Good punch from behind by Will Hanson. Good raving there also there by Drake. Hanson now over towards Child. Child chips it over further afield and finds a teammate there in Rory Mansell. Rory Mansell kicks along the wing. Looking for Alex Russell. It's over his head. Close attendance there by Harry Walters. Harry Walters takes the ball over the back now. Kicks immediately along the wing. Can't find a teammate. Diving for the ball. Well, was there. Child, but he couldn't take the ball. Players needed here to pick up the ball. And it's Cade Monday who does. He's tackled probably a bit too low. He handles off to Dylan Smith. He weaves around a couple of tackles. Handles to Hanavir. Back to Smith. Smith takes a bounce. Strong play here from Bernie. Kicks up towards centre-half forward. Tries to find a teammate and does. That's a good mark over there on the far side. Andrew Lee, I think. Andrew Lee, thanks, Mac. It's a long way over there. He kicks across the ground and looks for another teammate there in Clint Riley. He's got an opportunity to shoot for goal. Decides not to. Kicks about five metres further afield and finds Nick Walters. He's a lovely long kick of the ball. And he's going to kick from uh, just inside 50. A chance here for the Dockers to get one back and a badly needed one at the 18-minute mark of the third quarter. Yeah, South had started just to control the footy, didn't they? They were winning the one-on-ones. You could see their tackling pressure... Uh, was a lot better than what it had been in the first half, but uh, this is a massive kick now for Bernie to get uh, to get back uh, five goals. Nick Walters spent last year playing in Victoria, back with the Bernie Dockers. Kicks for goal, 40 metres out, and it's just fading in, is it? Oh, yes, it's a, it's a goal. Just inside the left-hand goal post. Just to beat the hands of the despairing South defenders, and that's a goal there to Nick Walters. 5-6-36, the Dockers, South Launceston, 7-11-53, 18 and a half minutes into quarter number three in the statewide league grand final. Still really interesting, isn't it? You know, South have got that little lead at the moment, but as we said, there is a bit of a breeze. Um, it's going to be really uh, paramount from here that South Lonnie just keep putting the foot down, that they don't stop just because they've got the lead, and obviously Bernie will keep coming. Tremendous effort out on the outer wing there by Dylan Smith, who looks as though he's been thrown in the midfield. Um, Daniel Johncock missed the tackle. He, he, he looked as though he didn't really want to tackle because of that shoulder injury uh, from a few weeks ago. And a cloud cover now, keeping the sun at bay as the ball goes back in the, the centre of the ground here. Now ends up with Harvey. Puts it out a little bit wider. The Dockers an opportunity to go inside their half-forward line. Ball's going in the Morrison direction. No, it's the Lee direction, rather. And he runs it towards the boundary line. And it'll go across the boundary. And a throw-in will take place there, just in the front of what was the old Northern stand. Uh, Zane Brown uh, is in a bit of trouble down there. He's got a bit of a knock on the head. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see what's going on with him. From the throw-in, Laycock works his way in there, so too does Kobe Thorpe. And the umpire said there was a free oh, kick in there somewhere. He just... Now is he paid advantage? Who knows what happened then? I don't. There's the ball being kicked deep to the top of the goal square. And is that Russell that's marked? No, it's Shackleton. It's Shackleton. Yes, Shackleton gets himself up off the bottom of the pack there. He just got goal side of Raymond there, and the ball went over the top. The, the stoppage, uh, you know, whether the free kick was there or not, but the problem is everyone stopped, and uh, Dylan Smith took it upon himself to continue on, and everyone else had stopped. Uh, good thinking, Dylan Smith, and it's in the hands of uh, Luke Shackleton, about 10 metres out from goal on a uh, pretty acute angle at the moment. Been fairly quiet by his standards today. An opportunity to put one on the board here, though, is the experienced player. Any uh, trots. Kicks goal it. umpire moves marginally. That's a goal. Shackleton kicks his first in the third quarter. They kicked the last two goals, Bernie, to stop in this game. South was 7-11-53. Bernie a 6-6, 42, 11 points. The difference. And uh, South Lonnie have fought, finally pulled the pin on uh, Bart McCulloch. Uh, he's been subbed out. And uh, Chuka McGee, Braden McGee, has been subbed in the game. So they've gone a tour for a small... Geez, I tell you what, they, they tried to keep Bart on. Whether they could have sat him at full four just as a target, at least he's going to take a defender. But he obviously just can't go at the moment, so he's been subbed out. But it looks as though, uh, you know, Zane Brown's still in a bit of trouble as well. So maybe they pulled the sub a little bit early. It's always the case. You pull the sub and all of a sudden someone else gets injured. 
Well, the Marsha got out to 23 points about two minutes ago. Bernie have kicked the last two goals that remain in the game in the uh, third quarter as we sneak into time on. Southlands doesn't have the ball in front of us through Joby Harper. He kicks inside looking for Hills and he marks right on 50. Too far out to score, so he, he uh, takes it off to Thorpe. Thorpe kicks from 55 metres out of the oh, top of the square. Oh. And the man who kicked the goal before in Dylan Riley has marked directly in front 15 metres out. I tell you what, that's a terrific mark because uh, I counted them as the ball was going in. There were seven Bernie defenders who actually got back onto Alex Russell and uh, and Dylan Riley. And Dylan Riley, you know, as I said, it was seven onto two, and they uh, Dylan Riley come up with a mark. One advantage South have here, though, Macri's there. They've got depth in their forward line. Yeah, they, they do. They've got multiple options. They've got multiple yeah. options. Right. It just might be that ruck hit out now, so they've got Hills and, Thor- and then Cody Thorpe are going to have to ruck as Dylan Riley comes in, 20 metres out, and he looks as though he's kicked his second for the quarter. And Dylan Rowley off half back is having a real influence. And it's uh, South Launceston 8 11 59 to Bernie 6 6 42, 22 minute mark of the third quarter here on City Park Radio. Well, Mitchell Thorpe uh, knew that Hills was going to struggle with the distance, made space very quickly to receive the handball and then just put it up at the top of the square. And as Matthew McGee indicated, a terrific mark there by Dylan Rowley under a lot of pressure. And then he pops the goal through and South stretch their lead now back out to 17 points. Umpire with the ball back in uh, centre field, 22 minutes into the third term. Laycock in there just fists uh, the ball forward. Not all that direct and positive with some of his taps as he gets it down and he puts his teammate under a lot of pressure. South Launceston players hold the ball in and there'll be a bounce down midway between the centre circle and the 50 metre semicircle line for the Dockers. Going to the Invermay Park end here in the third term. It's Cody Thorpe who gets the tap down and then Laycock gets it on towards his lot. He has the ball and himself thrown to the ground and the umpire hovers and says, holding the ball. <laughs> Poor old Caleb Hislop, he's had a tough quarter with the umpires, but once again, an amazing tackle there from uh, Matt Hansen from the Bulldogs. And he gets on with the play and he kicks it out wide here now, looking for Trevina, kicks it over the top to Barden Hagen. Barden Hagen been a good player in the grand final for the Bulldogs today. He's been a, a good link player for them. He's made space on a lot of occasions. Now he looks down forward, goes to kick to Joby Harper and it's too wide. In fact, it's out of bounds on the full. So a free kick will be the result here for Clay Hardy for the Dockers. Mitchell Thorpe not happy. The ball, he wanted the ball inside 50, but he went uh, short down the line. Well, there's the Hardy kick. He goes along the line as well, looking for Lee. Topped off the top there, goes to Barrett. Barrett on to Shackleton. Shackleton on to Gray. Gray runs, eludes the player. <laughs> he runs has a bounce just outside 50. Well, he was tackled as he went to kick it. Robinson's taken to the ground. The ball's been socket off the ground down there by Hayes. He's been quiet today, but he's run onto that one, the little goal sneak. And Braden Hayes has kicked his first for the game. Bernie still in the goal in the uh, ball game. Back to 11-point margin, 59 plays 48. Oh, Barry, it's getting exciting. I, uh, I loved it there. I called it the uh, the Brady Gray sidestep. Um, it was a lead. He, he just uh, he got he's got serious uh, quick wheels on him, but he just sidestepped uh, back from his soccer days. Brady Gray is a, he's a good soccer player. Just sidestepped uh, outside, and then uh, got the ball in. And our man Braden Hayes, he's one of our favourites here on City Park Radio. Bobs up and kicks the goal like he does uh, most weeks. The timekeepers tell us there's only two minutes left here in this third quarter, marching back to 11 points as uh, down goes the ball in the middle of the ground. Getting down the ball there is uh, Cody Thorpe. Gets down towards Nick Walters. He's tackled immediately. Eli Templeton can't take the ball with him. Comes out the back towards Joby Harper. Joby Harper kicks from the centre circle. Kicks inside 50. Gets good depth for the kick. Over the back there. Spoil comes from Harry Walters. Good spoil as it falls to Nick McKenna's feet. Nick McKenna out to Bannum. Bannum kicks up towards the wing around the corner. Chance here for Jay Child. Close attention is Eli Templeton. Child gets it back towards Riley. He sidesteps Templeton. Gets a dinky little kick forward towards Harper. It's a good kick. And Harper takes the mark. Time clock ticking down here in this third quarter. Harper, not a great delivery along the line towards Thorpe, who glares back at Harper as it goes out of bounds just uh, outside 50 on this RACT side of the ground. So we'll do the last minute or so. Quarters haven't been very long today, about 25 and a half minutes each quarter, and we'll just ticked over to 25 and this is the third quarter. Boundary throw in. Comes in towards Thorpe and Laycock. Thorpe gets it down. Punched over there by uh, Mitch Thorpe. Falls to Bannum. Bannum gets tackled, gets up off the ground. Well played, Bannum. Experienced play there. Ball comes back towards Caleb Hislop from a standing start. Kicks outside 50 towards Tyrone Morrison. He takes a good grab. Oh, it's not paid. Chopping the arms chopping against the arm Warren Hensel. Tyrone Morrison hasn't had a lot of the ball today. Kicks now from uh, defensive 50. Kicks in the middle of the ground into open space. Only players there are South players, though. Picked up there by Trevina. He does a good little sidestep around Harvey. Kicks laterally, finds Dylan Riley. Riley now kicks further afield towards Mansell, who's got space in front of him. He turns. He turns now. Very nice close. Got to go uh, long and deep. Three-quarter time. Handball's over the top towards 
Harper, Harper's tackle by his lob. Good tackle. Should have been penalised. There was. Play on now, says the umpire. As Brady Grace freaks away down the wing. Gets around Braden McGee. Steadies. Handballs over the top to the teammate. In Clay Hardy. He has to stop. He's tackled by Drake. Gets a handball away to himself. Gets it back again. Gets it over towards Templeton. Back to Clay Hardy. Nearly three-quarter time. Hardy now kicks inside the centre circle towards Barrett. It's over his head. But Barrett skillfully taps it over the top. But a chance to run on it. Oh, now it's Harvey. He's beaten the ball by Riley. Desperate play there by Dylan Riley. He's had a great quarter. Handballs yeah, awesome. over the top towards John Cock. John Cock on the wing. Gets around Hanavir. Handballs to Brown, who's all taped up now in the head region. Kicks down towards uh, the half forward flank. And Mitch Thorpe takes the mark. Hands on the siren here, about to go. Mitch Hills will take the mark and the siren will go any second. He plays on, which he does. He'll get the kick away in time. Will Bardenhagen mark it in the square? No, he won't. It's over his head and it dribbles through for one behind. And that will nearly be the last play. Yes, it is the last play of the third quarter. And at three-quarter time, the score in the statewide league grand final is South Launceston, 8-12-60, leading Bernie, 7-6-48, quarter game. 26 minutes. Oh, some really excitement, Dave, wasn't there? That it was. quarter, it was some great highlights. That quarter, South Launceston kicking four goals, three. Bernie kicking three goals, one. Yeah, you um, you got the feeling that uh, that Bernie were sort of starting to get back into the game, and then obviously South Launceston uh, took it away from them. But then, uh, but then Bernie uh, Bernie got what they needed. So, perhaps uh, to uh, Sean Mountley there on the boundary line as we're about to get underway in the last quarter. Barry Triffitt for City Park Radio Sport. Yes, uh, here we go for the last one for 2013. 12 points of difference. South Launceston lead uh, 60 to Bernie's 48. And the first use of the board is uh, by Bernie. A curry uh, kick by Smith, who was tackled a little bit high in there with him. And against him is uh, Matt Hanson. Ball still right in the centre of the ground there as uh, Laycock gets it. But there's been a free kick awarded to uh, Matt Hanson. And he takes it and kicks it out wide in the uh, Thorpe direction. That's Mitchell Thorpe. Ball bounces awkwardly for him, although he shovels it forward at ground level. Ball goes to uh, Walters, who's uh, set upon by two uh, Bur- uh, Devon- oh, I'll get it in a moment. Two Bulldog players, and the ball goes to ground, and there'll be a throw-up just outside the centre square on the far side of the ground. Cody Thorpe goes up, but Laycock gets the tap down, heads towards Smith. Hurry kick by a uh, South Launceston player in Russell, but the ball comes out there now to uh, Monday, and here go Bernie across their half-back line. They switch play here now through uh, Rudy Barrett. Onto the far side of the ground looking for Cade Monday. He takes it on centre wing. Railway side of the ground, steps around the player, then kicks it in the Bulldog direction. who has been quite the day. Mark of the day, though, taken by Dylan Riley as he climbs above Bulldog and takes a screamer across half-back for the Doggies. Kicks it out wide here now towards Trevina, who's got the ball in the last line of defence for the Bulldogs. Looks up uh, field, hasn't got a great deal on offer except Brown, who runs in with the head uh, bandaged up and marks it across half back. Looks down on the centre wing position here now, looking for Matt Hansen, who's uh, shaping probably as uh, South's best player here so far today, as he marks it right in front of the broadcasting position. Yes, yeah, spot on there, Barry. He's going to be in line for the net 19 player of the day. Spe- uh, steady as the game down. Uh, Thorpe come towards it. Uh, Mitchell Thorpe there, and he's been uh, spacked around the head. Tried to stage it a little, the umpire having none of it, there'll be a throw in. Just uh, really interesting. I, I, I thought, what's the influence has Jason Laycock had on the game? He's actually had zero marks for the game. Yes, and uh, he's had plenty of, of, of taps, and that, that he does exactly what he did there. He just thumps it, hopes his runners run onto it, and half the time in South Launceston, players like to have a game. Yeah, and Trevina puts it across, and there'll be a throw in. He's had 23 hit outs for the game, but zero marks. He's only had six possessions. Uh, the word from the South Lonnie huddle from uh, Doc Reed down there. Thorpe, he wants him to forget the scoreboard. He wants him to kick long. There was too many short kicks, as we mentioned, and he's asking for a massive effort. It was a, it was a very, very vocal Mitchell Thorpe at three-quarter time. And somehow Shackleton gets a kick out of the pack, kicks inside 50, but it's all the Bulldogs uh, taken away by James. He kicks here towards us on the broadcasting side of the ground, and Braden McGee, the sub, who came onto the ground with his sporting his new haircut there as Mark right in front of us. <laughs> There's his kick now towards uh, centre wing looking for and uh, finding the big fella in Mitchell Hills. He's been a good contributor for the Bulldogs all out, all through the game. Looks around now, doesn't have a great deal on offer. So he decides to just pump it along and go towards uh, centre half forward. There's one uh, South Launceston against oh, uh, three uh, Bernie Bannum. players and you heard a great mark by Bannum. He taps it about four times at the top of the pack 
and he falls and stumbles to the ground and marks across half back for Bernie. He kicks it out of defence to uh, Braden Hayes. Hayes has got space on centre wing broadcasting side of the ground. Kicks it in here to where Riley's in front again. Goes over the back. James is there, fumbles, eludes a player, runs into a bit of trouble, then handballs uh, over the top. And he uh, takes the old one two as he gets it back. Ends up here now with uh, Ryland Coombe. He decides to kick it and kick in the Thorpe direction. He tries to fend off two opponents. Taking it to the line there is Walters. He keeps it in. Handballs over to Shackleton. He's under the pump. Shackleton handballs on there further now to Bannum. Bannum uh, twists and turns. Kicks it out of the fence. Kicks it in towards uh, the uh, Morrison direction. But it goes across the back of him and down towards uh, Gray. Gray takes it now and throws the ball towards the boundary line and it trickles out and there'll be a throw in right on interchange at the three and three quarter minute mark of the final turn. Inter it's interesting there that Nick McKenna tried to run off Mitch Thorpe and uh, Plant gave McKenna the chop out. I tell you what, if um, if Plant uh, keeps too long on uh, Thorpe, he could be in for a big last quarter. Boundary throw in. It's Laycock up against Cody Thorpe. Centre wing. Thorpe takes it out of the ruck. It's a quick left foot kick into the centre square. Leading the race, the ball there was Dylan Riley. He can't take possession. Harper kicks off the ground, across the ground. He leads the race for ball again. Thinks about kicking it off the ground, but then takes the ball. Evades a couple of opponents. Kicks up towards the wing. Alex Russell's in front of Harry Walters. Takes the ball. Tackled immediately by Walters. Tackled to the ground. Does he release the ball? Yes, he does. So he's not going to be penalised. And I think it's going to be a ball up centre wing, railway side of the ground. As I grab the binoculars, as it's a long way from the action over here in our commentary position in the uh, level four of the RACT stand. Thanks very much to AFL Tasmania for providing us these facilities. As the knockdown comes from Harper. Falls, though, to uh, Bernie. Bernie player gets a quick kick away towards Bannum, who's infringed. His arm is chopped. And, uh, Macca, this last quarter, players like Bannum and Shackleton, these experienced players, could make a big difference for the Yeah, it looks spot on, David. As you say, that Brady Gray's down here. He's jumping up and down. He's all on his own. But Bannum cannot get the footy to him. Bannum kicks down the wing instead to Braden Hayes. Takes the ball in the half volley. Gets around Will Hanson. Kicks further afield. Nick Walters fumbles the ball. He's in close attendance there with Dylan Riley. Over the top to Bannum, who's getting a heap of it in this last quarter. Dummies a handball. and kicks around the corner in towards the uh, forward line. Looking there for Robertson. Well knocked away by James. Drake's on the base of the pack. Finally, it's back with James. Gets a handball over the top towards... Um, Jay Child, Child to Hanson, that's Will Hanson, back once again to James, James kicks on the wing to Harper, great play out of defence there from the Bulldogs, Harper now has space, kicks to Mitchell Hills, he's two kicks out from goal, fakes the hand pass to John Cock, decides not to, kicks inside 50 looking for Mitch Thorpe, although it's just outside 50, he takes the mark, the long way out from goal, I don't think he'll take a shot, he's shaping two, he be kicking from about almost 60 metres out, in a very stiff angle, kicks inside 50 now, looking there for Trevina, Gets first touch, but it can't get the second one. Knocked out of bounds. It's the second time Thorpe has done that from in front of the uh, scoreboard. Either. He's gone short both times. Uh, one earlier in the game and uh, one there. And missed the target both times. Not he's, a got high Hills. he's got Mitchell Hills and Alex Russell deep in the square. Get it in, I reckon. Great. Tap out there from Laycock to Barrett. He's tackled immediately, though. Gets a quick kick out on the right foot. He's non-preferred. Doesn't get anyone in particular. Picked up by Bardenhagen. Gets the delivery there towards Mantle up from the defence. Kicks inside 50. Not a good delivery. Quick kick out there from Harry Walters. Kicks outside 50, but a good mark there taken by Thane Bardenhaken. He's about 70 metres out from goal, directly in front. Goes a big kick inside 50. Up there as the Flyers. Matt Rory Manson really takes the mark. Alex Russell takes it. Can't get a kick away. Bernie defence hold firm. Quick out of defence. The only man there is Braden McGee. Thinks about playing on and does. Has a man in space. I think it's Rolla Kelly Mansell. And he's taken the mark. And he's at a 45 degree angle, about 30 metres out. And in grand finals, these are big, big shots. Bernie just lost their structure there a bit. Uh, South Lance has had players everywhere on their own, and Bernie were just uh, chasing players and just could not, uh, you know, South Lance are pressing up. Rory Mansell was up there, and Rala Kelly Mansell's about to have a kick for goal, Dave. 45 metres out, comes in, oh, straight through it. the middle. That's an important goal for the Bulldogs. He's congratulated there by Zane Brown. Are the Bulldogs. Locked towards Rala Kelly Mansell and good calm experienced play there from Braden McGee also summed up the situation saw Kelly Mansell free and he's put through a goal South Thompson 9 12 66 Bernie 7 6 48 seven and a half minutes into the last quarter I was going to mention uh, Dave um, Shawnee James we said that maybe it was a bit of a, a matchup issue down there with Robinson but look to, a true effort to uh, Shawnee James he stood to his task and uh, especially there he ran off uh, Russell Robinson and yeah. got a fair chance uh, Russell won't chase him out of the great uh, play out of defence yeah it was it was awesome and look he stuck to his task Robinson's taken a few marks but uh, Shawnee James stuck to his task well now Hills gets a tap down from South Launceston it's still in the centre of the ground and there'll be a secondary uh, bounce up here 
Bernie players calling for holding the ball, but I don't think there was any opportunity. And Bernie going to have to kick, what, four goals to uh, to even get uh, back in front by a goal. So. Yeah. 18 point margin at the moment then uh, Laycock receives a free kick for a backhander in that rucking duel and there's uh, one of his uh, few stats for the day he kicks it in, in towards uh, the Shackleton uh, direction and Luke Shackleton lines up from 45 metres out and kicks one for the Bernie Dockers they're still in the game back to 12 points at the 8 and a half minute mark of the final term he kicks his uh, second and Bernie have kicked 8 goals 654 South Launceston 9 12 66 now I want to declare it now boys so we get out of the way. <laughs> if, if it's a draw this afternoon, I've checked with Wayne Pavey from AFL Tasmania. Yes. We do have extra time. We do have extra time. Five no, next week. Way. No, I next suppose, week. Uh, AFL Grand Final next week could be a bit of an issue. But, uh, okay, extra time. Well, look, it's an even uh, It's an even two goals, so you never know. Um, interesting, um, uh, Sean Mountney down on the boundary said that Brent Plant's had enough up in the box. He's uh, too keen. He's got down on the boundary line to coach his players from the boundary line. It's um, darkened up a little bit too, hasn't it? The, the heavy clouds are starting to come in, but there'll be no rain. You can bet on that as the ball's taken away by Bernie's Cade Monday. Kicks out wide there looking for uh, Walters. Nick Walters, who's played the second half in the forward line, gets it on to Templeton, back to Walters, alludes to one player, two players, handballs over the top to Hardy. Hardy kicks from 55 metres out, skews off the left side of the boot a little bit in the Robinson direction, but it's too long for that player. Dribbles across the line and the boundary umpire will throw it in right alongside of the behind post. Going to the town end. Just to remind the commentary team today, giving a best player award, $50 voucher courtesy of Paul Woods from Net 19 in Abbott Street. From the throw in, town end of the ground, the wind has dropped away a little bit in this final term. Laycock tries to grab the ball, he's pushed to the ground, the ball goes down with him. Big pack of players there for South. Oh, there's a trip, you'd think. And the South Launceston player who picks himself up off the uh, ground in Matt Hansen will relieve for the doggies across the last line of a, of a defence. There's his kick out, looking for and finding the goal kicker in uh, Roller Kelly Mansell, who kicked a fantastic goal for the Bulldogs about a minute ago. There's his love rake, lovely raking left uh, foot kick to Mitch Thorpe, thumped away from him, heads down here towards the other Hansen in Will. He's pushed to the ground with the ball, and the umpire said he had no opportunity, will bounce it down, fellas. Ten and a quarter minutes, final term, grand final. You're listening to it live on City Park Radio 103.7 FM. As the ball goes to ground, there's four or five dockers there. McKenna handballs out, gets it on there to Plant. Plant handballs over the top, gets it to Barrett. Barrett with the left boot, kicks inside 50. But uh, the only player back there is Mansell for uh, South Launceston. And Rory Mansell marks on his chest at half back. Gets it on quickly to Ryland Coombe. He's set upon and thrown to the ground and probably could have got 50 metres, but he's not going to get it. He stands up now and handballs out to Drabina. Runs out of the last line of the fence. There's his kick now wide, looking for uh, John Cock. And John Cock marks on the uh, half-forward line, railway side of the ground. Jay Blackbury. Swings onto his left boot, kicks it in the Blackbury direction. And you call it, Matthew McGee, he's marked it's inside 50. He plays one quickly, gets it out wide to Jay Child. And Child has marked 45 metres from goal directly in front. They're the players that they need to get their hands on the footy, didn't they? John Cock and Blackbury. Haven't seen much of them since quarter time. And uh, Jay Child, wow, what a big kick here, the... Uh, the former North Launceston player, the former boy from up uh, the northeast of Tasmania, is going to uh, come in. Normally known as a back pocket player, he's come to South Launceston. He's played as a midfield role. He's super fit. He does the job for Thorpe every week, and he's going to have a shot for goal. Well, he's directly in front. The distance is about 40 metres. He's got the distance. I don't know about the accuracy. Oh. Goal umpire under the goal post, and he sees it hit the wood. 13-point margin. That could be a very, very handy point in the shake-up of this game. 54 plays, 67, and we've played 11 and three-quarter minutes. The handy point, Barry. And the count comes wide here to Harry Walters, who takes the mark in front of Zane Brown. He's just inside his defensive 50. Kicks wider. Sorry, it kicks inboard, sorry, to uh, a teammate there, and Rudy Barrett, who takes the mark. Still inside defensive 50. Slowing the tempo down a bit, the Dockers. Trail by 13 points. It's probably about another 14, 15 minutes to go. Kicks outside 50 now. Try to find Morrison. Drops a fairly easy mark. Falls to ground. John Cox in there. Can't get the ball out. Ryland Coob's in there with Rudy Barrett once again. Gets a handball forward to the ball. Taking the ball now is Brady Gray. has been quiet since quarter time. Gets it over towards Hayes. He's held there by Trevina. And Braden Hayes will take the free kick. Pretty much on the centre wing. And uh, the chance to launch an attack here for the Bernie Dockers. We trail at the moment by 13 points. 12 and a half minutes into the last quarter. Has Darren Bannon wide if he wants. Decides not to. Goes long inside 50 instead. Up there looking for Laycock. Well done there by Rory Manson. Front gets the ball to ground. Gets out to Ryland Coombe, who's tackled. Forces the ball forward of the ball towards Brown. He shovels the ball out towards Bothorpe. Bothorpe to Drake. Well done by the south defence there. 
He kicks out towards centre wing now, towards Trevino, who takes a mark on his chest in front of Darren Bannon, positioning the body well. Kicks further forward. Oh, Alex Russell's got Ball the fourth now. 50. Space. He can either go over the top towards Russell or he can kick it himself. Knopp takes a bounce, shoots from goal! Oh. From 40 metres out, Mitch Thorpe, that was very experienced and calm play by the captain coach of the South Launceston side. He had the choice there, he took the mark on 50, had the choice to go over the top to Alex Russell or take the shot himself. Took a bounce, went sideways, snapped truly, margin 19 points, Matthew McGee. I want to take you back here to centre wing, Dave. You say that there's crucial moments in games. Yep. Uh, young Trevina here, Daniel Mark. Trevina, one-on-one with Darren Bannum, who's a state player. Trevina, you know, he's had a good, solid game as a back and, and pushing up the ground. That was a terrific contest, a one-on-one mark here. Gives it to Thorpe. Alex Russell actually had 40 metres on his yeah. own, but Thorpe uh, decided to take it on his own shoulders and went bang. Back in the centre again, up goes Cody Thorpe, rises high, gets a beautiful tap down towards Jody Harper. He's tackled though and loses possession. It's on the ground now and uh, about four players dive in, so it's going to be a secondary ball up just forward to the centre circle, Matthew. The boys on the boundary say there is so much work going on down there on the calves, on the thighs, on the hamstrings from both teams. Uh, both teams are, uh, you know, get cut, suffering from cramp and those sort of things this late in the game. Okay, and dry surface here at Aurora Stadium. Credit to the curators. And that's uh, somebody's caught for holding the ball here. And it's going against South Launceston. And uh, against Jay Blackberry. And the free kick will be taken by Luke Shackleton. He's just to the right of the centre circle. Crowded 50 ahead of him. Not much space to kick into, so he decides just to launch it about 40 metres out from goal. Rising high there are two dockers, can't take the mark. Ball on the ground, Drake there with also with Hayes. It's kicked off the ground by Hayes, but it's to the right of the goal post, and it's one behind. And uh, brings it back to an even three goals now. We, uh, we talk all year, don't we, about South's forward line, and we've mentioned South have got the best defence. Rory Mansell's been tremendous down there on the, uh, on the key tools from Bernie. As we said, Jason Laycock, markless at the moment. Kick out from fullback by Drake. He's that the man. For Mansell. Oh, he's but he's given a push in the back to Eli Templeton. He'll take the free kick. He's two kicks out from goal. Right in front of us here. You hear the boost from the South Monson supporters. Templeton kicks up towards Laycock. As Macca said, he hasn't taken any marks today. Lee can't take the mark. It's on the ground. Laycock picks it up. Handball's over the top to Robinson, who's been quiet. Turns around on a full 360. Handball's over the top to Lee, who's tackled immediately. Gets the ball out now, but if the handball is astray, and it goes straight to Harper. Harper kicks blindly down the wing. Hence, he doesn't find a teammate. He finds Shackleton instead. He goes off the mark now, takes a bounce, kicks inside 50, looking here forwards. Great. Also, Robinson, who rises high, jumped far too early. In fact, he infringed a teammate, uh, sorry, an opponent there in Jay Blackbury. And he'll take the free kick 30 metres out from his defensive goal. Another player cramping there in uh, Clinton Drake. Done a power of work off half backs, been really good. Just ticked into the 16-minute uh, mark of the final term, so we've just gone past the halfway mark. He's going to play oh, that as well for in the back and 50. And Watch 50 this. Out. No, he's gone. He's called it against both Thorpe for a little push on the shoulder. There really wasn't uh, much in it. I thought it was just pretty good work. But uh, Brady Gray's going to take the kick about uh, just off uh, the Bernie side of centre wing. We haven't seen free kicks like that all day. We've just seen two in a row. There's the Gray kick now, and he kicks inside 50, looking for and finding. He's got a teammate who's marked it down there in James Plant, and James Plant with an opportunity to keep the Dockers in the game at the 16 and a half minute mark. Going to the town end in this uh, final term. There's a little bit of breeze aiding uh, that end of the ground and what breeze there is would be right behind his back and we're looking straight over his right shoulder. We get a good look at this. Here's the plant kick. It's on its way. It's to the right. It's offline. It's through for a minor score. Dockers move along to 8-8, 56. South Lawn System 10, 13, 73. There's the kick in there from Mansell and just carries the uh, compulsory 15 metres. And uh, the umpire's calling for play on now for some reason from Blackbury as he puts it on the left boot and kicks out wide to the uh, far side of the ground. South Launceston uh, with an opportunity to bring the ball down at the railway side of the ground through Clinton Drake. And he puts it onto the boot there now and kicks in the uh, mid Thorpe direction. Somehow he got the ball in the middle of two opponents in the uh, John Cock direction. He pushes it out in front of him and then drops what he probably should have uh, kicked. The umpire allows him to play on. It triples across the boundary line in front of the scoreboard down there. And there'll be a throw in at the 17 and a half minute mark. The South Fulton cheer squad's moved its way down to the scoreboard there. Isn't it great to see, though, that uh, they all they actually walked in from the city. They went straight up uh, Inver May Park here, uh, Inver May Road. And uh, you can hear them coming about uh, two kilometres away. There's the kick on the uh, far side of the ground. 
Running onto it there was uh, Bothorpe. He gets it out a little bit wider there to uh, Clinton Drake, who puts it out wider still and finds a boundary line back over in front of the scoreboard. And there's a good, healthy crowd over there for a Saturday afternoon at Aurora Stadium. Grand final, State League footy. Here is David Moore for City Park Radio 103.7. Possibly into the last seven or eight minutes now of this grand final. The margin's 17 points, so Bernie needs to get a goal. Quick smart here to keep themselves in the game. It's kicked inside 50 now for the South Fonson by Matt Hanson. Alex Russell can't take the mark. Ball fills to ground. Zane Brown's in there fighting for the ball with a couple of Bernie opponents. And it's going to be a ball up 30 metres out from the South Fonson goal. So what, three goals will win it for Bernie? What are they going to have left, Dave? Ten minutes? I'd say about ten at the very moment. So plenty quarters, of time. Quarters have been about 25, 26. It's only been a low scoring one this so far. This child handballs over towards Hanson. He snaps for goal. Doesn't make the distance and fades off to the left. And it just sneaks in for one behind, which makes it an even three goals. And uh, just got the guys to look at who's the best player on the ground today. And they'll be getting a $50 voucher, courtesy of Paul Woods from Net19 in Abbott Street. And thanks for Paul for supporting City Park Radio in today's grand final broadcast. As the short kicks out, uh, end up with Cade Monday. Often has the short kick out for fullback. He's in the back pocket. He kicks up towards the wing and he finds Nick Walters. He plays on immediately, sensing that time is of the essence. Kicks up further along the wing towards James Plant, who takes a juggled mark out in front there of Dylan Riley. It's way over on the far side of the ground. Very hard to see as the clouds rolling now. Darkness starts to descend a little bit on Aurora Stadium. Kick up towards centre forward. It's taken now here by Blackberry on that trusty left foot. Oh, as but, he turns uh, it not over. Not so trusty <laughs> this time as he's picked out Rudy Barrett on centre wing. And uh, it's only said it's about 19 and a half minutes in this last quarter. We've probably got about seven or eight minutes. I've got the timekeepers next to us, so we'll get an update in a minute. It's Cade Monday has the ball now. Looking for options up forward. But kick short instead to Tyrone Morrison. Crowd's gone quiet, haven't they? They're just waiting for something to happen, either Bernie to have a charge or South to kick the sealer. And Tyrone Morrison kicks inside 50 here. Looking there for Darren Bannam. He can't take the mark. Picked up by McKenna, who's been quiet. Charges through, gets tackled. Gets a handball away to a teammate. He can't get loose. That's Dylan Smith, I think it is. And uh, in there is Jay Child. What a great tackle from Zane Brown. Nick McKenna come at him like an absolute steam train. And, and uh, Zane Brown is about half the size as him. And he's just, uh, he just tackled into the ground. So tremendous effort there from little Zane Brown. Ball's 40 metres out from Bertie's goal. Laycock could tap out to advantage here towards Bannum. Bannum runs onto the ball, picks up the ball, stands up in the tackle. Handball's in front of himself. Can't get it back again. Got it back again now as Bannum shoots with the left foot. Mm. But he gets too much hook on it. And it sneaks in for one behind, making the margin 17 points. South Launceston 10, 14, 74, 38, 9, 57. Barry Triffitt. 10, uh, 20 and three quarter minutes into the final term. All the kicks a poor one. It slips straight through the hands of uh, Sean James, but John Cox there to butter up for the Bulldogs. He's on half back. He chips it over the top. He hasn't got a great deal on offer there. The de uh, Bernie defence just thump it wide down towards Barrett. Barrett kicks it inside looking for Robinson. Robinson can't take it on the second uh, mark. Planters there in support with him. Launces, uh, South Launces since James is there. Hislop just uh, stands and delivers and uh, kicks it out of the fence. And it's uh, taken by Sean James down here in the last lines. He gets it out wide here now to Dylan Riley. Riley runs out of the fence for the Bulldogs. Kicks it in front of us on the broadcasting side of the ground in uh, Keller Mansell. He takes it now and kicks it towards uh, Thorpe. Thorpe uh, takes the ball now and drops it. Uh, he's under a lot of pressure from Andy Lee. Quick hands over the top. And it goes on there to Laycock. Laycock takes the ball on the uh, centre wing on the broadcasting side of the ground and kicks inside 50. Shackleton takes a one-handed mark, runs on with it quickly, puts himself onto the left boot. He's, he forces himself to bring it back a long way, and he can't do it. It's gone through for a minor score. Bernie, eight goals, uh, 11, I reckon that'll be, 59. And South Launceston, 10, 14, uh, 74. The scoreboard might have beat me because it's saying 8, 10, 58. Zane Littlejohn's joined us in the commentary box once again. And I just uh, got the message from the timekeepers, only about two and a half minutes to go. So, not long to go here in the grand final. So, 16 points the margin as the ball's kicked out wide on the outer flank. In there for South Launceston is Jay Child. He's got the ball. He's tackled beautifully there by Barrett. The ball goes to ground, and the umpire said we'll throw it up, fellas, about 70 metres out from the end that uh, Bernie are kicking in this final term, that being the town end of Aurora Stadium. It's on the railway side of the ground, and it's taken away here by Walters. He's been a good player in the second half, loses a couple of players, and then runs onto the right boot and kicks from about 45 metres out. And uh, it was Nick Walters, and he kicks his uh, second goal for the game since moving into the forward line and been a great contributor, and Bernie still hang in. They are nine goals, 10-64. The margin's back to 10 points. 
South Launceston 10, 14, 74. Look, and I, I know firsthand, guys, uh, Bernie know how to win from this position. I, I saw it in the second last round down there uh, when we were roughly like pretty much the same margin, only a few minutes left, and they uh, they won the next in the clearance moving forward, and then it went their way a little bit as well, and they ended up uh, getting the points against us. So this next in the clearance, McKenna's got on ball now. Some big body shackled and, and Nick Wilders himself on there. So this centre clearance is going to be massive. Then two goals in about two minutes. As we know, you can get two goals within a minute in football these days. Oh. Poor bounce down by the uh, field umpires. Field umpire there. And uh, the secondary throw up this time. Just a little goes. something going down in the uh, Bernie Ford line here. Robertson's not happy with someone in the crowd by the look of things and paying absolutely no attention to the football. As uh, Mitch Thorpe gets the ball from the defensive side of the centre circle, kicks it wide out towards Zane Brown. I think he can push it towards the boundary line as much as he can at this final time of the game. Well played by Dylan Smith, though. Gets it over the top here towards Caleb Hislop. Hislop's got space. Kicks up now towards centre half forward towards Templeton. Rises, can't take the mark. At the spillage, though, is Bernie. Taking the ball away there is Tyro Morrison. He kicks inside 50. An opportunity for Bernie. Mitch Thorpe has dropped back. Main defence and knocks the ball out. Shows his experience there at the vital time in the game. He knocks the ball over the boundary line about 15 metres around from the Bernie goal. This is really their last chance, I think. They're going to have to score a goal here. Otherwise, time's just unfortunate against them. Boundary throw in. Deep in attack for Bernie. Laycock over the back. Gets it out towards space, but Jamie Harper's there. Handball towards the boundary line towards both Thorpe. Taking away is Shackleton. Gets a dicky little kick, but it gets smothered, and it's out of bounds. Got my on the timekeeper's here. I think we're probably into the last minute. It's 24 and a half minutes gone. The first and second corners only went 25 and a half. There hasn't been that many goals kicked in this last quarter. Boundary throw in. Good play there by Mitch Hills. He, hand, he uh, hits it towards the boundary line. In fact, he'll be penalised because nobody else touched the ball. Umpire said deliberate. deliberate. Kick inside 50 now for Bernie. Up goes Laycock. And he takes the mark. His be, first mark of the day. His first mark, as I said. A oh, crucial one. Now he's going to be kicking from probably just outside the 50. He's gone back quickly knowing that time is marching on. He's going to have to kick this one and then centre clearance from the Dockers and another goal for him to win this premiership. That's 10 points of difference. Jason Laycott, 45 degree angle, kicking from just outside 50. Experienced player, former Essendon player. In he comes. Kicks now towards goal. It's not going to make the distance quite. It's off hands. or no, it's not. Taking the mark there is Nick McKenna. But he's hard up against the goal post. He's going to be in a very stiff angle. He also knows that time is short, so he gets back quickly. He's on a very stiff angle, but he's only about two or three metres out. So if he comes around on the angle a bit here and opens it up, goes the banana and misses. Probably could have gone round. What do you think, Zane? Should he have tried the left foot snap there or gone the banana? A bit oh, hard to... Always tough there. I think yeah. it's, a, it's a personal preference. And he obviously uh, thought just the old right, right snap there was uh, was the way to go. Well, the coach for South Launceston is going to bring the ball back in. He kicks it to himself, Mitch Thorpe. And away he goes. He kicks it 80 metres out of the fence to the railway side back flank. Over there, the foreign sound, and South Lodchester have won the 2013 State League Premiership. They've kicked 10 goals, 14-74. Bernie, 9-11-65. She's a grand old flag. There it goes. Well, there we have it, the Premiers for 2013, the South Launceston Bulldogs. 10-14-74, 9-11-65. Matthew McGee's out on the ground, he's going to try and get us some interviews. In fact, Matty's ready, so we'll cross down to Matthew McGee, got, he's I've out on the, the ground. Coach. Well, the coach of South Launceston here, Mitchell Thorpe. Mitchell, can you believe that you're a premiership coach? I can't. It's your level, mate. Unbelievable game. I took the new Bernie would throw everything at us. It was, a, it was a typical grand final. Wasn't that pretty, but my word, the boys worked hard and... Oh, what a game. Yeah, mate. All right, so go and enjoy. We'll hear from you later. Thanks, fantastic. Well done. Thanks to Matthew down the boundary line. And we'll get uh, interviews from Matthew as he grabs people down there. But, Zane, your first reaction to the South tacking at the Premiership? Oh, look, fantastic. Well deserved. Well done to Mitch and, uh, and the boys. He's, uh, he took the job on a couple of years ago and really put in the hard work with them and had a tough couple of years. We had a tough year there last year, but he knew that he, what he had in place was the right thing, and it's, it's shown now. 
And Barry will uh, get the goal kickers. If you get Matthew again, we'll just cut across. Yeah, so, no yeah. problems at all for South Launceston. The coach himself kicked two goals, and so too did uh, Dylan Riley. Singles to Rolla Kelly Mansell, and that was an absolute gem in the last quarter. Bart McCulloch kicked one. And Will Hansen, also J.B. Harper and Payne Barden, Hagen, Alex Russell. And I think Matthew McGee is down with uh, yeah, another mate, player on the ground. I've got, uh, I've got Bart McCulloch with me here. Uh, Bart, congratulations, mate. Probably not the day that you want to personally, but you must be wrapping the team up. Oh, look, doesn't matter personal today. It's a uh, great team winning. Best day of my life. Yeah, well done, mate. Go and enjoy with your team. Thanks, Macca. Okay, Matthew McGee doing a great job down the boundary there, getting those first reactions in. Now, it's always a very emotional time because there's so much that goes into a footy season, isn't there, Zane? You know, um, you start pretty soon, really, October, November, and it's it's the culmination of such a lot of effort. Spot on. There's a lot of hard work that goes into footy clubs, and, and the blokes out there right now, and obviously, Bernie's had a fantastic year, and they're putting in a lot of hard work, but obviously, unfortunately, can only ever be one winner, which is a sad thing about sport, but also makes it what our great game really is. We're seeing something, I'll get back to the story, Baz, the goalkeeper, but we're seeing something great at the ground now that that, that grand final was played in excellent spirit. There was a lot of hype about, you know, that the knuckle might be happening and that sort of thing. But you seeing there that players all shaking hands, I can't really think of a nasty moment of that grand final. No, you know? And for younger players, that's important for them to see that you can play in a premiership and you can play a hard game and play it fair. With so many people here today, it's a great sale for our game of footy yeah. and, and footy in Tasmania. And um, I guess you can probably hear a, a lot of states would talk about Tassie footy being a bit thuggish and all that, but today was a great uh, spectacle. And just watching uh, young Dan Chocock having a chat to Nick McKenna. And they had an incident at Youngtown a few weeks ago where I think uh, Dan injured his shoulder. And we've got Matthew McGee down to the ground again. Who have you got, Macca? Yeah, mate, I've got the captain of the South Launceston and Premiership captain, I should say, Mitchell Hills. <laughs> Mitch, tell us how you're feeling, champ. Pretty excited, mate. Well, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Like, I'm so proud of the boys. Just can't believe it, mate. Fantastic to by everyone today. You know, and you said during the week that, you know, you've been through the tough times here at South Launceston, but to stand here as a CSL Premiership player, Oh, mate, I just didn't think it was going to happen, mate, ever. To be honest, I, to tell you the truth, I just never thought it would happen. The boys done together a couple of years ago. We worked our asses off for two and a half years to try and make this happen. We just go in line, it happened before we thought it would happen, but I'm so happy, mate. The last few mistakes were... Today's game, mate, it was a tough game. You know, Bernie can come down here. It's about to get underway, so um, I'll turn up the uh, microphone. Let's, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that. welcome to the presentation. Following what was a fabulous grand final between South Launceston and Burnie. And firstly, a round of applause for Brent Plant and the Burnie Dockers, a wonderful effort, boys. You did your club proud. A little earlier, we had the Tassie medal presented to Mitch Thorpe. It was a bit rushed. Mitch was ready to run out and play in the grand final. So I'd invite Dominic Baker to come forward and once again present the Tassie medal for the best player in the competition. To Mitch Thorpe from South Launceston. It was a bit rushed before, and we appreciate Mitch actually coming to accept the medal before the game, but maybe we'd like to do it properly. Uh, congratulations, the best player in the TSL for 2013, and the Tassie medalist, Mitch Thorpe. Uh, Dominic, before you go. We've got the presentation of the Baldock Medal for the best of field. And the best player adjudged, best player in the grand final is Joby Harper. I'd now like to invite Tanil Savage, who is Roy Kazali's great granddaughter, to come forward and present the Kazali medal to the Premiership coach, Mitch Thorpe. present the medals to the Premiership players from the South Launceston Football Club. Number one, Daniel Trevena.
Thank you. 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 Thank and at the moment, the players are getting their premiership medals. Number three, Jay Blackbury. Number four, Brandon McGee. Okay, we'll just fade down the presentations there just for a moment. We'll come back uh, when the Premiership Cup is being presented. Uh, Samuel, I'll just have a quick look at some of the stats there for today. Yeah, well, uh, the, the um, Baldock medalist, who obviously uh, Joby Harper, had 17 disposals, 14 kicks and only three handballs. And but hit the scoreboard, which probably might have just got him over the line in the end, I'm thinking. But Matty Hansen, who obviously won our uh, player today, had 30 disposals, 24 kicks, six handballs, which is a fantastic effort. But... Um, yeah, and on the other hand for Bernie, 24 disposals to Bantam, 23 to Monday. Shackleton got up there to 17 as well in the end. Big names for Bernie, but just couldn't quite get them over the line. Yeah, they did, uh, some of those big players for Bernie in that last quarter did lift, but it just wasn't quite enough. They found themselves too far behind in the scoreboard and just, you know, just couldn't bridge that gap. Yeah, exactly. And and look, at, I'll, I'll look here now again, and Mitch Thorpe, the, the coach in... Uh, he had 11 marks, 21 disposals. It's not a bad, uh, not a bad game for the uh, for the leader of the South Lawn Footy Club. Yeah, I mean he was he was influential in early, uh, but you know that last quarter, even dropping in defence there, when he knew that the game was on the line. No, he uh, dropped down defence and made a crucial score. Looking at the looking at the group stats, the the team stats as well. Uh, obviously, uh, Bernie hit back with inside fifties in the last quarter, having seventeen to eight, but still a uh, a ten difference overall in the whole game. So that's hard to sustain. Yeah. And uh, Zane, what do you think about the whole concept here? Of I, mean, I know you like to keep out of the politics of TSL football, but does it feel a bit strange that South Bonds is in here winning the Premiership and, OK, they might be in a different form, the prospect, say, next year, but, but how do you feel about that? I mean, obviously your heart's with North Launceston, but have you got oh, a reaction to it? Oh, look, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, in a way, a little bit disappointed for, for Mitch and the boys because it's out of their control. It's not their fault, unfortunately. It's probably the governance of the of the footy club and, and, and what's happened there. And, uh, unfortunately, the players don't control that. They just control what happens on the field, and they've done everything they can. And, unfortunately, some people off-field probably haven't done what they needed to do to uh, to make sure the club is in a position to be continue in the TSL. I suppose, uh, from what we're hearing, the players are going to stick together next year and, and uh, go to that new, new entity. Um, Hope not. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully a few yeah, across that when across, they come yeah. to North Wants That's right. But, uh, <laughs> anyway. well, yeah. I think we've, in our discussions before, I mean, it's been great uh, that the three teams have, have been fantastic in North and Tassie this year, that Lonnie, North Wants and South Wants and there have been some great battles between the three throughout the season. Oh, definitely. And I think it's hopefully, hopefully with the, uh, if these boys do cross over to the new side and, and now hopefully in the uh, in the coming years that the three three Lonnie teams will be really strong again and it'd be nice to see two Lonnie teams, one in the red and black and a, a, uh, a blue and white team yes. or whatever the new side yeah. wears out here playing uh, yeah, this time sure. next year. It'd be nice. It's the third grand final in a row where there hasn't been a Southern team uh, participating. So uh, may that trend continue as a parochial northerner. Yeah, it'd be nice. Okay, getting close. Sorry, Baz. Yeah, yeah no, I was just going to say, we looked at the stats and that there, but uh, we probably haven't looked at uh, the better players as yet, as we saw it up here in the um, in the commentary box. So uh, I might have a look at the Bernie Dockers, and yep. Zane might have a look at the South Monsters yep. and fellas. And, of course, we're looking more than just who got all the stats. We're looking at those yep. that we thought were the better players in the game, and um, they were in the stats, of course, some of them. And Darren Bannum and, and Rudy Barrett were certainly terrific footballers, contributed all day for the uh, Dockers out there. Kate Monday was uh, also a, a, a fantastic player for them. I thought Brady Gray did some wonderful things at times, and when Bernie were falling off the pace on two or three occasions, he was the one that uh, bobbed up and just sort of did something special, kicked a couple of goals as, as well. Caleb uh, Hislop, I thought, was a terrific uh, contributor for them right throughout the day, and uh, at times he just made paths for other players and pushed and shoved his way through and allowed other players to probably get a clear possession of the ball. And then they had other players that flashed in and out of the game. Uh, Dylan Smith did some good things. Andrew Lee was there on a, there on occasions. And uh, Nick Walters, I thought, when he went down to the forward line in the second half, was a terrific uh, player for them for them as well. And the further the game went, uh, players like Luke Shackleton uh, got better and better as the sort of the game went on. But uh, certainly some good players right across, and other people have different views on it. But uh, they were my better players, I thought, for Bernie. Before we get to you, Zane, we might just uh, go back to the presentations because we're uh, getting close to the end of the medal presentations and uh, we'll be having the uh, Premiership Cup given to the South Boston Bulldogs in just a moment. 
and the playing coach, Mitchell Thorpe. Just before we present the cup to the boys, I know Mitchell would like to say a few words. Um, thanks very much to the crowd for turning out today. It was a, a pretty tough, hard game. Full credit to Bernie. They're uh, an outstanding uh, club, first and foremost, and, and an outstanding football side. So I think everyone's put their hands together for Bernie. To our boys, it's been a, an interesting season. I think everyone's aware of that. And, You've, you've stuck, stuck at it, and oh, I can't be more proud of, of, of the way you grinded the game out today. And let's have a couple of refreshments tonight. I now invite Trent Sayers, the CEO of RATC Insurance, the sponsors of the competition, to come forward and present the cup to the two Mitches. South Launceston. As uh, the players get together with an official photo, uh, it's been taken with the Premiership Cup. There's lots of press photographers there, and uh, the celebrations will now get underway. As the song uh, belts out through the PA again. Congratulations to the South Launceston Bulldogs. Premiers for 2013. Okay, Zane, uh, we'll get to you now. Get a player's um, from your point of view there. Yeah, well, obviously, obviously we've spoken about the Hans and the Harpers, the Thorpes and all those type of things, but I think we've, we've, got, to, we've got to pay credit to the lesser likes of South Launceston Footy Club, and, and they've, they've been fantastic all year, these guys, who, who aren't big names in Tercel Footy, aren't big names in Tassie Footy, but they've just done their job week in, week out. The likes of and I know we mentioned him, his name a little bit in the call today, in Jay Child, left our footy club at the end of the year last year and that, that was fine and we, we were really happy for him to find a new home and, and have a really good successful year at South but he's had 15 disposals today played on uh, Eli Templeton and kept him to 10 as well so that's a fantastic effort um, I know we, uh, Barry mentioned too before about Sean James playing on Robertson um, he's had 14 disposals had 6 in the last quarter when the game was there to be won that's a fantastic effort and just a player who not many people talk about but has really done his job uh, Clinton Drake off half back as well uh, Rory Mansell these type of guys who, who are, are, are going to be names now in, in Tercel footy which is fantastic for them But um, so there's some really quality players there who have uh, who really stepped up today and, and, and have stepped up all year and, and just continue to play their role for their footy club Injuries are a big uh, thing with a back line, isn't it? If you can get a, a set back six that goes through the whole season together, it just makes such a difference, doesn't it? Oh, massively. And that's one thing we, 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 we've tried to get into our footy club is to settle our back six down first. And, and we, we have different players go through there at times, but the core group of it is the six together. And um, if you've got some good leaders there, it, it really does help. Well, Mansell for South on and really leads from the front. He's done a fantastic job this year. Now, I thought you, uh, your thoughts there on Sean James on Robinson. I mean, he kicked four last week. Uh, as an experienced player. And, uh,